Hi, I'm Adam Mayer of the Owen Sound Platers. Stay tuned to OHL Hockey, next on Rogers Community TV. <laughs> Welcome to OHL Primetime on Rogers Community Television, live from the Harry Lumley Bayshore Community Center in beautiful Owen Sound. I'm Manny Pava, and we'll bring you action tonight with the Owen Sound Platers and the Brampton Battalion. The Platers losing for the first time in five games on Sunday against the best team in Canadian junior hockey, the Ottawa 67s. So they're on a bit of a roll right now, thanks in large part to goaltender Curtis Sanford, who is certainly on his A game stopping an average of 45 to 50 shots a game. Players do have some problems in the dressing room, though. Disgruntled forward Sean Avery, one of their top scorers, has asked to be traded. But so far, no deal has been made. He will be in tonight's lineup. The 12, 10, and 3 players face the 3, 21, and 1 Brampton Battalion. The battalion struggling with only three victories so far this season. But last time they were in this building, they gave Owen Sound a run for their money, losing in the last 10 seconds of regulation time, 6-5, to five, Kyle Flaxey scoring the winner for the Platers. We'll see what happens tonight. The Platers and the Battalion face off live from the Harry Lumley Bayshore Community Center and bringing you the action, the G-Men, Glenn Juniper and Gary Hahn, and we'll bring the action up to them right after this as you watch OHL Primetime on Rogers Community Television. Curry Freshman's for OHL Primetime in Owen Sound is brought to you by Burger King. At Burger King, it's your way, right away. Jay Doyle and Larry Pelesny, both seven points on different lines. This is Goldie's goal! Oh, how about that? Were you just talking about West Goldie? Hi there, I'm Manny Pava, looking for the info on the OHL Owen Sound Platers. Follow Dan Snyder, Adam Mayer, Curtis Sanford, Chad Willard, Kyle Flaxey, and the rest of the crew right here on Rogers Community Television with Plater Profile, hosted by me, Manny Pava. You can catch it Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. Hello and welcome to the Owen, Sh Owen Sound, the Harry Lonely Bayshore Community Center. This is Rogers Community Television, Gary Hahn, along with Glenn Juniper. And, uh, well, the last time Brampton were in here, Glenn, they almost outworked the Owen Sound Platers for a couple of points. Well, that's the thing. And if you do come and play against these teams, there's a new expansion team, you know, to say, oh, well, we put our sticks in the ice, we get two points. You don't do it against these teams. They're here to win. They've got nothing to lose. they got to put three periods together against this team tonight. Referee for the hockey game will be Rick Scaly from Barry, John McCutcheon of Rockford, and Darren Price, the linesman. A slight delay before we start the hockey game. It gives us a chance to look at the goaltenders. There you see Rick Scaly just skating into the picture. And at the south end to our left, David Chant gets a start. 4.54 goals against average. Three wins, 10 losses, and a tie. His save percentage, 0.872. And defending the goal to our right is Corey Roberts. Roberts, four wins, three losses, a 5.44 goals against average. The rookie netminder for the Owen Sound Platers. So we're ready for the opening faceoff at center ice. Snyder against Bateman. And the hockey game is underway from the opening faceoff. Rolls back into Owen Sound territory. Left there for Flaxy. Throws it off the boards to Davidson. Davidson will vacate his own zone down the left wing. Throws a cross ice. Got through to Campbell. He's in alone. Campbell breakaway shot. Oh, a great save there by Chant as Campbell got the first shot of the game. And it was a I'll breakaway. I'll tell you, was it ever. Of course, David Chant has stayed up. It's a good thing he did. Peter Campbell tried to get the roof puck up on the roof. It didn't do it. Davidson looking for the lead pass again. Broken up by Torres. Puck inside the Brampton line. There's Davidson's weak shot. Missed on the short side. Buck rolls into the corner. Battalion in the white. And of course, the Platers in the dark. Going around the boards by Parthenay. At the blue line. Stopped by Campbell. Campbell into the center. Throws it toward the net. High nice stick. Day. Yep. Good call. Davidson couldn't touch it right away. It's Dompkowitz keeping the puck in. 
across the black sea fan in his wrist shot and then got it handed back to him again we played 56 seconds Brampton with the first line change now Owen sound changing as well just my slender way here the Owen sound players and the Brampton battalion from the Harry Lumley Bayshore Community Center watch number 23 defenseman Jay Harrison They'll take a look at this kid six foot three 200 pounds 16 years old and the number one pick of the Brampton Battalion in this past summer's draft. There's a chance for Sean Avery. Avery couldn't get his shot off. Good back checking there. Spetsa throws the puck to the far side, picked up by McSwain. McSwain trying to flip it to center, pass behind Thompson. So far, Brampton can't get anything started offensively. Spetsa, the 15 year old, uh -huh, in his own this, zone. Yeah. The scouts, NHL scouts, are drooling about Spetsa already. And Corey Roberts with his first save of the game. Shots on goal are one to one, but how about that breakaway right off the bat? Right, right off Peter the bat, Campbell. and again, Peter Campbell. Normally, Peter buries this in, takes the goaltender down, and shoots left top. We'd like to welcome all of the viewers watching Battalion Hockey in Brampton in the Greater Toronto area. I'll tell you one thing, you know, with the the Brampton team in here, any game you play, you know, what have they? Three wins or whatever it is. Not a lot. This is a new team in here, but they're an exciting team. They are. And they if they stick hard. with this club for next year, the next year they're going to be a tough team. You watch. Yeah, when you've got, what, three minor Bantams drafted who don't look out of place. And here's Avery with a pass for Woolard inside the line. Woolard looking back for Avery. Avery can't get the shot away. Went off his skate. Trying to keep the puck in was Hapavari. That didn't work. And it's Vukovic, last man back. Brought in by the battalion Barker. He left it there for Fryer. They couldn't get his shot on goal. And it's Joel Ward, the birthday boy, over center, inside the blue line. Ward. Trying to get around the defense. Good job there by Hodges, number 22. Back to the point. Off the bench, Hapavari with a shot. shot. Good left hand save. save. Chant with a big left hand trapper. Two minutes and 15 seconds gone in the opening period. No score in the hockey game, but already we noticed the Chant has made a couple of quality stops. Well, I tell you, but look the way he's coming here tonight. If you're going to beat him, it's going to be a good goal on him. Interesting that Brampton drafted a very young team, but they drafted two goalies, both born in 81. I thought they might draft a goaltender or acquire a goaltender with a little bit more experience. Well, again, the uh, stand might be looking at the fact, hey, if we're going to draft a young team, we also need young goaltenders because they've got to carry the mail for us. There's a chance right out front. There's a shot. That was high. A good opportunity there for Brian Kazarian, the Owen Sound native. Kazarian has the puck in the corner. Watched closely by Reynolds. Behind the net, Owen Sound in the early going all over Brampton. Back to the point. There's a slap shot by Barrett. That was blocked. Ends up in the corner. Owen Sound come up with it again. Back to the point to Hapavari, the kitchen native. Hapavari to the faceoff dot. Off the skate to the side of the net. Chan is down. And a good job there to take the Owen Sound plater. I'll give Hanchuk some credit. Took his man right down to the ice. And again, a, a good move by the Brampton player there. Just put that puck down and get a faceoff. Shots on goal are two to one, but they could be three, four, five. Oh, without well, no question, the offensive chances we've had there right now favor the Platers, without no question. We talked a lot already about uh, David Chant. 4.54 goals against average. He has all three of his team's wins. And uh, Chant, 5'11", 180 pounds out of Whitby. I'll tell you, you know, when you get with a new team like that, especially a goaltender, you know you're going to see a lot of rubber in there. That kid's playing well. Face off to the right of Chant. Jan Salk thought he had won the faceoff, but a good job by the winger to hop up and take the puck away. Inside the line is Torres. Torres, a nice move in on goal, scores! Oh on the short side! Oh. I don't know if he's got that jock with our defenseman there. He wants to give it back to him because he just took him right out of it that time. So Brampton take a 1-0 lead at 2.59 on a goal by Torres, and a beautiful move. Watch the move he's going to put on this right defenseman of the Owen Sound Platers. And watch. Here's the thing you don't do if you're a defenseman. You go over and look at that puck like that, boy, I tell you. You better make contact with that player. And again, Corey Roberts is going down a little too quick, and they know that. They got the puck and Corey. Put it up top. Well, you certainly don't want to allow a goal on the short side there. But and Scored by number 10, Rafi Torres. Assisted by number 15, Lucas Pavel. Time of the goal, 2 minutes, 59 seconds. Rafi Torres, Torres from his ninth of the season, assisted and by Lucas Hubble at Even though Owen Sound has been dominating the play. Here's another opportunity, backhand shot there by McSwain. That was stopped by Roberts. Puck deep in the Owen Sound zone slider. The captain trying to get something started. They turn it over again. A couple of nice dances there. Spencer with a shot. Kept in at the points. Kicking in his Woods. Woods taken to the glass in the corner. Stone to the far side, and Flaxy will take it. Kyle Flaxy just flips the puck into the neutral zone, took a weird hop, and ends up in the penalty bench. It's and again, good pressure by the battalion. Anniversary no, they're not going to fall under that pressure like that. 
three minutes and 36 seconds gone in the opening period. There's Peter Campbell, who had the earliest chance to score in that breakaway. Great pass set up uh, oh, by Davidson to send him in. With no question on that. And again, Peter stayed wide where he should be, and he walks in alone. And a quick shot of Stan Butler there, the head coach and general manager of the Brampton Battalion, former coach in Oshawa in the OHL, and also has some experience in the Western Junior Hockey League. And going to have some experience in the uh, junior hockey worldwide. Stevenson couldn't get started. They moved the puck ahead to Campbell. Campbell can't get a shot away. Here's Davidson following. High wrist shot goes off the glass. Peter Campbell has it. Hands it to Snyder. Snyder watched closely by Barker. Barker, the overage former. Former Cole going to have her first penalty called. It's going to go against Brampton. Roberts slowly makes his way to the bench. Puck came back to the point. The referee whistled the play, even though... Oh, and Sound had clear-cut possession. I don't know if the player came off too early. Who made the call? Well, I think maybe they're, they're going to bring this uh, face off out here. I think you're exactly right. You hit the nail right in the head. If you're coming on, you've got to have that goaltender. You know, they always said before, ten, within 10 feet of the bench. I think right now they're ruling even closer than that. So the indication of the Lions and whistle the play dead when the extra skater came on before the goaltender was at the Owen Sound That's bench. exactly right. And there's Brian Parker. We just talked about him, the overage veteran of the battalion. And the first power play of the hockey game goes to the Owen Sound Platers. We'll set up the power play stats in just a moment for you. Trying to get the puck out is Torres. He has the game's only goal as Brampton lead 1-0. But the battalion shorthanded now for the next minute and 45 seconds. Roberts wants to shoot the puck up. Catching up with it is Avery. He's checked by Torres. And Bateman dumps it back in Owen Sound territory. How, oh. many, how many times have we set up with that first pass and don't let pass in his own? Owen Sound 26.6% on the power play. And as far as penalty killing, Brampton last in the league 50%. So pretty well you score one out of two against them. Yeah, that's one uh, area there. But again, it's an experience. Exactly. There's a shot in the point. Stopped by Chant. Busiest player in the rink is David Chant so far. Clear down the ice again by the battalion. Vukovic back into his own corner. Four checking is Van Lusen. Vukovic is going to take another look. The quarterback sets up behind the net. He's got Avery on his right. The outlet passes to Avery off his stick. He catches up with it inside battalion territory. Drops the puck off. A little too deep for Goldie. He wanted to send it back out front. Brampton throw it off the boards of Vukovic to the left point. Nick Vukovic to Avery. Avery along the boards. He had Ward deep. Threw it back to Vukovic across ice. Dom goes with a shot. That hit his teammate in front. Battle for it. Gerald Ward trying to come up with it. And it's cleared down the ice with 30 seconds left in the Brampton penalty. I tell you, Brampton doing a good job and keeping our, our players outside on it. Domkowitz pass goes off the skate. And Brampton throw it the other way again. Right back to Domkowitz. Snyder at center hands the puck to Peter Campbell. Campbell tried to backhand it in. It does get deep. Chance stops it. Swinging around the boards is Woods. Stopped at the point by Hopavari. He keeps the puck in. Eight seconds left in the power play. Campbell dancing in the corner. Sent it out front, nobody there, and Brampton are back to full strength. Owen Sound, zero for one in the power play. 13 minutes, 55 seconds left in the first period. Brampton had the game's only goal. Here comes Snyder, had the puck taken away by Hodges. He throws the puck to the near corner to Woods. Woods goes down the wing. Hopavari couldn't quite keep it in. Chris Hopavari to the open wing. Nobody over there. Both teams want to make some more changes. It's thrown deep into Owen Sound territory. Icing indicated. Back to touch it is the kitchen in Hopavari. That'll get a face-off deep in Brampton Italian territory with 13.33 left in the period. 1-0 and a goal by Torres. Assist to number 15, Lucas Havel. And again, the, uh, you've got a situation right now. Owen Sound's getting working the puck around deep in their zone quite well, but they're not planting that man in an open spot in front of that net. And there were chances for Sean Avery to make a couple of passes and, and, and do a, give his dancing and giving and going. And he came back to the point each time. That's right, exactly. So the face off to the left of Chant. From the draw, it's controlled by Maleko into the corner. Right there is Campbell. Moving in from the point is Barrett. His shot went off the end glass. Kazarian keeping the puck deep. Kazarian. Trying to feed it through. Couldn't get it to Sulk, and it's cleared off a leg and down the ice. Race for it now. Thompson down quickly. Thompson and Barrett battle for it. It rolls to Roberts, and he's going to hang on. Corey Roberts. And you can see, of course, Barrett that time, he went right at Thompson. He didn't want the puck. He got burned badly over there. That, and I'm sure he was advised of that when he got back to the bench. 
But that's how you have to play it. Take the man off the puck. There's going to be another man coming back to get the loose puck. Psychologically, you know, you're the only song played in that dressing room. Even though the coaching staff are telling you, hey, we got to do our best game to beat this team tonight. But psychologically, you're thinking, oh, go there. And it's going to be easy. We can rack up a few points. Now, all of a sudden, the opposition's not going to give you that. Lead pass. Adam Campbell threw it right for Kazarian off his stick. Chant is out to clear it around the boards. Kearns couldn't get to it. Kept into the point. A high drive over the net. Oh, and Sound throwing a lot of shots off that end glass. Well, I'm sure the book on Chant is put the puck high on him because he does go down low and covers that bottom half of the net, but they're just not successful in getting the... Uh... Kearns tried to go coast to coast there and almost cut in, and now he's going to head back to the bench. He's a big kid, number 24. Well, I'll tell you, they got some good potential players on here. Wow. Kazarian over center ice down the right wing inside the blue line. Adam Campbell goes to the net. There's the weak shot. Chant had no problem hanging on to that, and we'll get a face-off again deep in... Brampton territory. Talking about uh, Kearns. Six foot three, 209 pounds from Hampton, Ontario. Not eligible to the 99 draft. I you know a lot of people look at it and say, the, uh, why do you load your team up with such young players? But again, it's a development team coming in there, standing a wise thing. He's looking not this year, not maybe next year, but two more years on the road. You got a team you can build on. That's right. Two years from now, if they can keep this nucleus together, mature and grow as a team, they should be very competitive in the OHL. Mm, that's right. This Perhaps is a good hockey area. Hodges, Hodges back behind his own net. They got a brand new rink. I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard good things about it. You had a man cup. Oh, game I went down, down the there. man cup down there, love lacrosse. Then uh, super ranked. They did a great job on it. Joel Ward, 18 years old today, trying to get started at center ice. Can't go anywhere. Torres hands it back. Flipped off the glass to center. Domkowitz threw it ahead for Ward. Ward looks into the middle. Right ring pass for Menard. Menard trying to dance in front of the goal. Couldn't quite make that last finish. Good hustle by Menard. It was so. Again, it's Woods. He'll try the other side. Menard is there quickly. Throws it deep. Joel Ward back behind the net. He bumps. Buck at the side of the goal. Came up front. Picked up by Woods. Woods just throws it to center. Domkowitz is there. He's checked as well by Havel. And the battalion make changes on the fly. Eight minutes, 40 seconds. Gone in the opening period. Brampton lead 1-0 now. The Owen Sound Platers turn to make a wholesale line change. This will allow Brampton to easily bring the puck out. Well, maybe not so easy. Kept inside the zone. Snyder's got the puck going to the net as Davidson. Davidson now into the corner. Snyder is there as well. Randy Davidson back to the point. Hopavari threw it toward the goal. Sometimes a wise thing to do because Snyder wanted to make his way to the net. That's exactly right. You got nowhere else to go with a puck. The smart place put him play in front of the net or around the net somewhere. Last week uh, when we did the London Owen Sound telecast, we talked about the fact Don Cherry had uh, released Peter Sturgeon. And, of course, he has uh, hired a new man to take over the Mississauga Ice Dogs. And that is 29-year-old Jim Holt, who comes to the Ice Dogs after coaching the Kingston Voyagers of the Ontario Provincial Junior A League. They had an 18-6-1 record. Interesting that uh, he lives in the same area as Mr. Cherry. The, yeah, exactly. The Kingston area. So we wish him luck. Not a good, Kingston, not a good hockey area. Good hockey people come over to Kingston. I also have a brother who lives down there. <laughs> yeah, relatives, eh? Yeah. Snyder shoots the puck in, approaching the midway point of the opening period. Back deep is Maleko. He throws it around the boards. Didn't get anywhere. Barrett keeps it in. Deposits the puck deep. Again, it's Maleko behind the net. He's bumped there. Loose puck in the corner. Davidson moves in. He's watched by Van Lucen. Mucking down in the corner in battalion territory. There's the high rainbow. But the, with this ceiling, that's not going very far. That one didn't come And down. I don't think it's coming down. No, someone's going to find that up there someday when they paint the beams. <laughs> How does this ever get up there? 10 minutes, 25 seconds. There's Stan Butler, the head coach and general manager of the Brampton Battalion. And uh, most people around the league like the job that he's done. Spent a lot of time visiting with the director of hockey operations, Ray McKelvey, here. Of course, uh, it's been known that uh, Sean Avery has asked to be traded. And although I'm not suggesting there's anything that uh, works But I'm sure two. they're talking about it while, yeah. they're, while they're here. Why you not? Know. You never know. Personally, I think the best place for Sean Avery is in an Owen Sound uniform, but what do I know? There's a chance for Spezza. Spezza 
on the back end. Good defensive play there. A little late, but nice job by Dave Stevenson. Exactly right. Good thing he got to touch the puck. Spezza made his move. Avery trying to get around Big Parthenay. Puck is controlled by the battalion. Then we'll turn it up ice. It's Spezza again. 15 years old. And we'll go back in the OHL draft. There's a chance for the Brantford Battalion. Thompson shot blocked off the defenseman's stick. And it's Woolard. Woolard leaves the puck for Ward. Ward gets over the red line, shoots it in. He had his man standing still at the line, Harrison. Ward goes deep, tried to center it to Woolard. Puck stopped by the goaltender, Chant. And the battalion just put the puck down the center of the ice. It bounces. Might not go all the way. Roberts comes out, and he'll play it off the boards as Brampton sends four players over the boards. Here's Menard. Menard trying to cut in. Good defensive play there by Spezza. Oh, and Sound had to be careful as they were in the act of changing. Didn't want to get caught with too many men, but they are called on an offside of the Brampton blue line. And again, you know, the pick on Sean tonight, but if you're going to make your change to that far part of the ice and that sentiment's waiting for you to get on there, you've got to put a little more hustle getting it off the ice as well as coming on the ice. On your left, Dave Cicliano, and on his right, extreme left, Brian O'Leary, the assistant coach. Dave Cicliano, the head coach of the Orange Sound Platers. Well, you can see that already the two coaching uh, staff got their heads together. Yep. Here. Yep. This, this game's not going to be easy. Waxy gave the puck to Adam Campbell. It's taken by Salk. Jan Salk, the former Kingston Frontenac, knocked down inside the line. Thrown to the blue line. Flaxy will keep it in initially. Good effort there by Flaxy. Menard back for Salk. His shot, and I believe it went off the glove of Chant. Yeah, Chant just got a bit of it. Great story about Kyle Flaxy. Sat down for a series of games. A 19-year-old who wasn't doing the job and uh, has recommitted himself, I think. Well, I think he's got to be. He wants to stay in this league because he was not. You're right. He wasn't doing the job. Bottom line. Jan Salk falls trying to put on the brakes and the Brampton Battalion throw it back. Good hustle down the right side by Havel. Lucas Havel taking it to the boards but maintains possession. Senator right up front. They score! A you. beautiful goal! That's hustle from Havel. And you know, if you got to finish, take a check in there on the man, you better finish him off. I believe it'll be Bateman, number 25, is going to get credit for this. And Havel is going to pick up his second assist of the hockey game. But, it, but again, watch this in the replay. Now, you're the defenseman going back in there, or forward, whichever the case may be. You've got to finish the man. Poor job. Now, now I always allowed to pass it. And, of course, where, where do they put the puck? Off the top shelf again. At 11.33. So Bateman from Havel at 11.33. And don't look now, but it's 2-0 for the battalion with 8 minutes and 10 seconds remaining here in the opening period. And Owen Sound certainly getting their chances. But they haven't had the quality shots no. they had initially. No, not at all. Puck bouncing around in the Brampton corner, thrown behind the net. Snyder trying to step out, looking for an open man. He'll try to cycle it back. That didn't work. Maleko is there, and he flips it out. Notice Brampton do that flip it out quite often. Yep. And again, what they're doing, they're, they're bringing all three forwards right back in there. You see them? And then, uh, and of course, when they're ready for a line change like that, whoever got the puck, somebody hollers at them, and they put the puck out. They certainly are open to that, to break out down the road. And the Owenstown players are going to sneak one in there again. There's the high clear once again. Hopavari gloves it ahead. We're playing handball right now. And of course, Owen Sound can't touch it first. Somebody's got to touch the puck. Finally whistled down by the referee. Yeah. So, there's the score with seven minutes and 24 seconds left. Both teams making changes here. This is the Ontario Hockey League on Rogers Community Television. Gary Hahn along with Glenn, the coach, Juniper, and a cast of hundreds behind the cameras and in the truck to bring you Owen Sound Players Hockey. Hope you enjoy the telecast. And a special welcome to all of the shut-ins and all of the people in the nursing homes that can't get out and in Enjoy the Platers live here at the Harry Lonely Bayshore Community Center. And a big thank you to Burger King as well on 10th Street West. They feed our crew before every game. And believe me, that's a tough job, but they do it well. When you feed this crew, and they're always satisfied after their meal, that's a tough job is right. Kicked ahead by Menard. Parthenay stands up Avery at the blue line. They get it out and then back in. Well, it came in off of Brampton skate, though. I question that call, but regardless, we get oh, the whistle. Brampton player down and get the wind knock on him. Look at the collision on the board side there. Seven minutes and five seconds remaining in period one. Two nothing for Brampton. Oh, yeah, can't get a number who's down there. He's still down. But... Just to continue with the uh, new coach of the uh, Ice Dogs, 
Bolton replaces Peter Sturgeon, of course, the initial coach and GM after the expansion team. Mississauga got out to a 121-1 start. Assistant coach GM Adam Bennett was fired as well. Bolton actually played in the OHL for the Kitchener Rangers, 86 to 88, and was an assistant coach with North Bay last year. Dave Anderson has been named Halton's assistant coach. Anderson is another former player who played with the London Knights and the Guelph Storm and had been working as a team's marketing director. Well, again, it's a tough job coming in and, and taking over a team that was selected by somebody else, and you're committed to the player roster of whatever talent level they got. Well, he, he's starting to get his win now. And... Number 12, Freya is the injured Brampton player. And a nice round of applause here as Shane Fryer is back up on his skates. And again, it was just good, uh, solid contact, the puck coming out. And it was Chad Willard, of course, he run into it along with the boards, and, and Chad's a pretty solid kid himself. Yeah, Chad is very solid. He's still uh, feeling the effects of it. Yeah, Fry is a little woozy there. So Fry, uh, yeah. Don't want to alarm anybody back to Brampton. He looks like he's going to be all right. Oh, yeah, he'll he'll get his win back. Avery wins the faceoff, and it's shot in by Stevenson. Chant stops it behind the goal, taken there by Harrison. The alternate captain throws it around the boards. Stopped by Vukovic. Woolard with a shot. That's blocked. Loose puck. Stevenson couldn't get it deep enough, and out come the battalion over center. Down the right side is Barker. He drops the puck for Torres, back to Barker. Sharp angle shot. That's stopped by Roberts. Played his try going down the middle. Thrown off the boards by Kazarian. Picked up by Avery. Avery trying to dance through the defense, and it's cleared off the boards and down. Six and a half minutes to go. Two nothing. Brampton leading Owen Sound. First period action. Ahead for Kazarian. He throws the puck deep. Plater's changing. In his own zone, it's Hodges. Pass to the boards. Flaxy thought he had it. That should be icing. It's indicated. Back forward is Thompson. Yeah. Roberts came out. Good hustle. Good by hustle is right. Brampton will never come up short. They will not sell you short because of effort. Menard can't get around his man. Good job there by Woods. He used to stick out in front of him, and Chant will hang on to the puck. And again, that's all Woods did. He just steered Menard off into the corner. Menard stayed with it, though, and was able to get the puck out in front, but David Chant, uh, he just hung on. Nothing loose in front of him. There's a few of the fans here. They hurry along the Bay Shore Community Center, the Owen Sound Planters bench. Brian O'Leary, assistant coach, and also an Owen Sound native. Great Owen Sound content this year with three players and an assistant coach as well. And that, and that holds uh, pretty well for the uh, hockey program here in Owen Sound, especially a small city like this. Flaxy at center ice. Swain was with him looking for the puck. Hodges moves up, shoots the puck in. Pardon me, that was Woods. Roberts leaves it for Kyle Flaxy. Flaxy thought about going to the boards, then thought against it, then didn't throw it there, and Thompson was there, but it's Menard who comes up with it. Menard with a feed for Kazarian. Pardon me, Joel Ward. Ward right in. There's a shot. Chant the pad save. Got the two pads together quickly. Cleared off the board. Stopped at the blue line, though. A lot of good goaltenders. You know that. You, your goaltender. Give you that five hole and then close and up on you. Take it away again. Jan Salk with some good hustle along the boards on the far side. And Salk's hustle has drawn a penalty. Uh, I'll tell you, I've been impressed with uh, Salk the, uh, ever since he came to camp here from Kingston. I heard rumors or some questions about whether he could uh, play in the, well, he, he can play in here with no question. Yeah, for those people watching in the Toronto area, Jan Salk acquired from the Kingston Frontenacs for Ryan Rivard, and Rivard had gone home, really. And yes. it looks like it's a steal as far as the players are concerned because Jan Salk just gets better and Every better game and better. Big kid. Drafted by Tampa Bay, number 15 of the players. Right now, it's Snyder taking the face off. Peter Campbell has the puck back to the point to Domkowitz. Domkowitz faked it, throws it to Vukovic. He moves in closer. Shot! Hit the goal post! Bounces out front. There's a backhand shot by Davidson. That's gloved by Chant, and they don't come much closer than that. That's exactly right. And again, you can see they got the book on Chant there, too. You know, he thought that big a kid. He's down quite a bit. Put it upstairs on him. That was a half an inch from going in. And that's usually what a post is. Half an inch either way. Watch the replay on this one. 
Again, good puck movement back to Vukovic in here. And he cranks one. He wants on top shelf up there. But he hits the outside of it. And around it goes. We heard that ding here. Here's Vukovic across to Domkowitz. Peter Campbell. Campbell had it knocked away initially by Bateman. Throws it deep. Snyder kicks it back to Peter Campbell. Campbell, stick counting. Nobody moving yet. Snyder at the end boards back to Campbell. Now he goes across. Domkowitz got a second shot. Backhander bounces in front. Davidson couldn't bat it in. Peter Campbell has the puck again. 120 left in the power play for the Platers. Brampton lead the hockey game 2 0. Peter Campbell end boards again for Snyder. Snyder, the captain, trying to trade places with Campbell. Now he picks up on it. Peter Campbell takes the pass, deflects it up front with his feet. Davidson's got it. Back to Domkowitz. He ah. can't keep it in. So the Italian want to change their penalty killers as Peter Campbell wheels back into the zone. Watch closely by Maleko. Maleko and Campbell. Peter Campbell puts on the brakes. Maleko is right there to the far side. Davidson has to hurry. Behind him is Torres. Back to the point. Domkowitz throws it to Peter Campbell, and he didn't have any time as he was hurried by Maleko. And then the Brampton Battalion throw the puck to center and you down. you got to give Brampton credit for that They're aggressive on their uh, back check on a man short. Good positional play, I thought. Oh, exactly. Domkowitz with the feed. Vukovic goes right side. Pretty tough to take that one, Sean Avery. That was a drive oh, and a half. Exactly. I don't know how they expect to take a, a rifle about six inches off the ice. Some players have the knack of just putting it firm, but right on the tape and just anger your stick and you've got it. Other guys have to drill it. Here's Chad Woolard inside the line with six seconds left in the power play. It rolls through, didn't get to the goaltender, and that will do it for the Owen Sound power play. Brampton back to full strength, and the players now zero for two with the extra skater. And again, right now, we're out shooting Brampton 10 to 5, but of course, you won't know it by the scoreboard. Three minutes left in the first period, 2 0 Battalion. Papavari at the point. Long drive, good shot, and Sook couldn't quite get free to get it deflected. Here's another steal the side of the goal. Oh. Goldie just missed. Wow. Right now, the Platers just need a break around yeah. the net. Yeah, but they just got to keep pressing, and then it'll eventually come. But Chad Willard, he just wanted to you know, how did I miss that one? Two minutes, 41 seconds remaining here. In the opening period, Brampton goal scored by Torres and by Bateman. And there's Barrett, underager. And again, what's the replay on this, fans, when it comes up here? Good puck movement around and whatever else. And watch that. How wide open can you be? But it just rolls on its head. It's off the toe of the stick. Never even get a shot on that. No, it doesn't even count as a stat. No. Face-off controlled by the Platers. Shot went wide from the point. Brent Sullivan out there centering. Barrett with a shot. Stopped by Chant. Rebound came right back. Hopped away from Ward. And it's brought out by Brampton. Center ice. The pass intended for Havel on the right side broken up. Trying to follow through is Maleko. Maleko got it back into Bateman. Bateman looking far side. Finds Hanchuk. Hanchuk with a shot. Routine stick save for Roberts. Sullivan throws it ahead. Joel Ward, out of his own zone, looking into the middle. Tried to find Adam Campbell. It was stopped by Maleko, ends up going over the glass and out of play. Two minutes and one second remaining in the opening period. Coming up in our first intermission, we hope you'll stay with us as Manny Pava talks to the head coach and GM of the Brampton Battalion, Stan Butler, and a few of the Activities around the Ontario Hockey League as well. So please stay with us in our first intermission with Manny Pava. Two minutes and one second of playing time away. He's watching uh, Stan Butler down there, a little upset with Lecce on that one play in there. But again, the uh, he was late coming in when the I don't know it was Tom or Bateman was looking for the open man. He was late coming in. He should have been in there half a second sooner. And there was a lane, wasn't there? There was a lane right there. That's exactly what Stan was telling them. 150 left in the first period. Plaxi across to Domkowitz. Domkowitz with a low drive. Just rolled through to Chant. And he's going to hang on to that one. And again, one of the one of the things that if you bring all your three forwards that deep, it leaves the opposition defenseman if they use them, utilize them, they get a lot of shots. Our defensemen probably have 50% of the shots on net so far this game. But the one thing I like, some of the defensemen are keeping that puck low and giving the forwards a chance to deflect the exactly. puck on route. I mean, if you're driving it up around somebody's ears, nobody wants to stand in front of the goal. You got that right. Especially these boys, Hummus. John McCutcheon 
Heinzman preparing the face off to the right of Chant. Face off won by Spezza. Around for McSwain. Puck in the corner held by Hodges. Now it squirts loose. Back into his own zone is Domkowitz, the Buffalo native. Across to Flaxen, he just got it out. Spezza is there. Spezza with a blind pass that made it through. And into the corner goes Thompson. Thompson trying to dance away from Flaxen. They both go down. 1.15 left in the period. Controlled by the battalion. Spezza with his shot. Stick saved by Roberts. And that was a nearly, nearly in there too if he did flex that puck in front. Good work there by Swain with Thompson looking for Spezza. Swain throws it deep. Right out front, and luckily Flaxy was there for the platers to Peter Campbell. 52 seconds left in the period. Long lead pass out to center for Davidson. Went off his stick. No one sound want to make one more line change with 45 seconds to go. Deep is Woods. Into the corner. Spinning back is Hodges. Hodges backhands it off the boards and gets it down the ice. Vukovic has to go back, and Brampton will make one more change with 30 seconds to go. They want fresh troops out here for this last 30 seconds. Pretty good idea. Vukovic wants to lead the way. Steps over center. Backhands it in, but didn't get it deep. It's cleared to center ice. A couple of platers are trapped. They clear the zone. Boy. Stevenson tried to send it back for Woolard. He didn't expect it. Vukovic over the glass and out of play. And this is where communication helps in a case like that. If you're going to hot potato that puck in there, you better let the man know you're giving it to him. Right now, shots on goal, 15 to 7 in favor of Owen Sam. But where it counts, folks, it's 2-0 <laughs> yeah. on the scoreboard. 2-0 Brampton. Here's Woodstock native Dave Stevenson preparing for the faceoff just outside the Owen Sam blue line. 12 seconds to go. Avery knocked down, didn't like it. And then we get an offside at the line, and Avery will have a chance to... Uh, to talk about getting knocked down. Well, again, sometimes you, you start doing a lot of talking and everything else. The opposition also notices it and maybe give you a little extra shot. Eight seconds to go. Avery takes the face off against Thompson from the draw. Three seconds. That should just about do it. Chant, one more save right at the buzzer. The shots on goal 15 to 7 after one period in favor of the Owen Sound Platers, but holy smokes on the score sheet, it's been all Brampton <clears throat> Battalion, and I guess, Glenn, the one thing you maybe suggest if you're the Owen Sound uh, Platers coaching staff right now is don't panic. We're getting our chances. That, that, that's right. You just got to keep doing what you're doing, but be a little more critical on some of your shots. We've, we've had 16 shots of that, but how many uh, potential shots have we had? How many scoring chances have we had down there, and we haven't been rewarded yet? If you're coaching the power play right now, you saw how patient yet aggressive if that's a, a safe way of explaining it, that the Brampton Battalion were, what would you do differently in the power play? Well, again, what you I think what you've got to do, we're allowing them to be aggressive on that uh, box back there, especially in the back corner, man, because we're not planting anybody right in the middle. we got to force one of those corner men to watch me. And then that opens up, we can get some odd man situation coming over to the corner or whatever else. So after 20 minutes, it's Owen Sound out shooting the Brampton Battalion, but the Battalion have a 2-0 lead after 20 minutes of hockey. Don't go away, Manny Pava coming up with our first intermission. This is Owen Sound Platers Hockey here on Rogers Community Television. Welcome back to OHL Primetime on Rogers Community Television. I'm Manny Pavin, now joined by the head coach and director of hockey operations for the Brampton Battalion, Stan Butler. His team up 2-0 after the first period of play. Gotten off to a good start tonight. Well, you know, I, I think the big thing in the first period is we took advantage of our chances where uh, they haven't really capitalized on theirs. And, uh, you know, that's what we got to do because, uh, you know, we're playing teams that are older and more experienced. And when we do get our chances, we got to take advantage of them. It's been a tough goal so far, though, only three victories. How have you been able to keep the confidence up in the kids? You know, it has and it hasn't. I mean, uh, there's been some encouraging things. Uh, you know, we had two big wins over Mississauga. Um, you know, we've had a lot of close games, and uh, we've got a lot of kids that are winners, and, and they realize that, you know, most nights when we go out on the average, they're, they're two years younger than the teams are playing, and uh, they realize that, uh, you know, some nights they're going to give their best, but, uh, you know, they might fall a little short just because of the experience factor. You mentioned Mississauga, and you built the team a little differently than the Ice Dogs did, and it seems to be working in your favor. Well, we just decided that if we 
you were going to have a year where you weren't going to get a lot of wins, it better be your first. And uh, So we went with a young team, and uh, we have 21 players uh, eligible to return next year, and uh, I'm sure it will draft well, and they won't all be back. And uh, you know, So the guys are not only working hard for this year, but they're trying to make sure they're in that top 14 or 15 to make sure they got a spot here next year. Yeah, it'd be nice to have Jason Spezza come back. Hopefully he's around there. The well, I mean, he's a great kid, and he's a local kid, and that's great. But, you know, at the same token, and, you know, we can't control that. And, uh, you know, the league has a draft, and uh, we just got to abide by the rules. Um, you mentioned the fact about uh, you have a young team. You've made a few changes, but for the most part, you've kept the same number of soldiers or the same number of same guys. Well, we got younger. I mean, we got rid of Jay Doyle, who played here, who was a good old age. You know, we thought we'd give him an opportunity to play a more, you know, uh, competitive team in London, and we picked up a good draft pick for that. And I think that, you know, that was the move we made. And uh, you know, we released one, you know, 18-year-old defenseman and to play a younger defense. And uh, you know, and we added one free agent uh, young kid. So I mean, yeah, we, we every time every time we do something, uh, the big word uh, youth comes up, and, and that's what we're always trying to do. Stan, uh, for those people who don't know at home, you're the assistant coach of the. Uh National Junior Hockey Squad this season, and uh, today the uh, invitees to the camp were released. Adam Mayer of the Owen Sound Platers being one of them. Um, first off, talk about Adam and why he was invited to the camp. Well, I mean, we had a great press conference at the Bristol Place today, and uh, the reason Adam was uh, nominated to be on the team is that he's just a great leader and a hard worker, and uh, we think he's a championship type player. And uh, in a short-term competition, you need people like Adam Mayer. Uh, we're looking for gold again this year, obviously. After well, I mean, um, you know, anytime uh, you're a Canadian and you, you compete in hockey, uh, you know, they'll settle for nothing less but the best. So, I mean, it's obvious that that's what we're going to strive for. And uh, the biggest thing we got to do is make sure we prepare the team in a way they have a gold medal performance and then uh, hopefully uh, a little luck of the Irish. Repeat on last year's uh, eighth place performance, that's for sure. Stan Butler, head coach and director of hockey operations for the Brampton Battalion. His squad's up two to nothing. Lucas Havel assisting on both goals and will the first intermission will continue live on OHL Primetime on Rogers Community Television. First intermission here on OHL Primetime on Rogers Community Television, live from the Harry Lundley Bayshore Community Center in Owen Sound. The players in the battalion taking part in tonight's game. Well, let's see how they're doing in the standings as now we take a look at around the OHL. And first we'll start with the East Division and the Eastern Conference. Ottawa, the top team in Canadian Junior Hockey, leading the way with 46 points. Only two losses on the season. Quite a record there. Peterborough next. Not a bad record at 15 and 11, but they find themselves 16 points behind the 67s. The Peets tied with Belleville with 30 points in second spot in the East Division, followed by the Oshawa Generals and the Kingston Frontenacs are struggling currently on an eight-game losing streak and only have 15 points on the season. In the Central Division, the Barry Colts tops in that division with 20 wins and 42 points, only four losses on the season. The Sudbury Wolves and the North Bay Centennials are tied in second spot with 21 points. The Toronto St. Michael's Majors only three points behind in third place with 18 points. And the one expansion club, the expansion Ice Dogs from Mississauga, only one victory on the season and four points. The Plymouth Whalers losing two games against Midwest Division teams last week now find themselves with four losses on the season but still in first place in the West Division in the Western Conference. The Sioux Greyhounds have 33 points. Their 10-game winning streak was just snapped by Kitchener last week. They have 16 wins on the season. Sonia next with 26 wins. Windsor with 19 points. And the London Knights going from worst to first, now to worst again with 18 points and last in the West Division. There you take a look at the Midwest Division standings. Welp in first with 38 points, followed by the Erie Otters with 31 points. They beat Kitchener last night. Owen Sound has 27 points with a 12, 10, and 3 record, followed by the Kitchener Rangers with 18 points, and the expansion Brampton Battalion with three victories and seven points. Taking a look at the leading scores 
in the Ontario Hockey League. Harold Druken from Plymouth leads the league in goals with 33 and points with 54. Peter Sarno from Sarnia jumping into second spot with 47 points. Druken's line mate Adam Kula Giacomo slips to third with 45 points. Mike Zygamanis, the sophomore from Kingston, having a good season again with 44 points. Shalvin Keefe, the rookie from St. Mike's, has 42 points. And Brian Campbell, the stellar defenseman from Ottawa, leads his team in scoring with 42 points as well. And there you take a look at some of the goaltending leaders. The top two from the Ottawa 67s. No wonder they're the best team in Canadian, ho Canadian junior hockey, that is. Seamus Kotsak and Lant Levant Zuper. I'll get that name right sooner or later. Both with goals against average under two. And there you take a look at Robert Polzinger from Plymouth, Brian Finley, and Greg Hewitt, who is playing really well as a 19-year-old with the Sardia Sting. And that's a look at the stats around the Ontario Hockey League. But don't go away. The first intermission will continue with a first period summary right after this on OHL Prime Time on Rogers Community Television. First intermission here on OHL Prime Time on Rogers Community Television, live from Owen Sand. The Brampton Battalion lead the Owen Sand Platers two to nothing as we take a look at the two goal scorers for the Brampton Battalion. Rafi Torres got on the board first for Brampton at the 2.59 mark. The assist going to Lucas Havel. And then at 11.33, Jeff Bateman scored his ninth of the season from Lucas Havel again. Torres' goal was also his ninth of the season. That coming at 11.33, and that's on the goal scoring for the first period. Owen Sound out shooting Brampton 16-7 in the first period. The players struggled on the power play, though, going 0 for 2. Brampton did not have a man advantage in the first period. Now with second period action, let's head back up to the G-men, Glenn Juniper and Gary Hahn. Thanks very much, Manny. Owen Sound coming into this hockey game with 12 wins, 10 losses, and three ties. The Brampton Battalion, three wins, 21 losses, and a tie. And I'd have to say the story in the first period was the goaltending of David Chant and the playmaking of number 15, Lucas Havel, who assisted on both Brampton Oh, without goals. question. That's exactly where it comes down to. Then, uh, but David Chan, of course, again, every team, every team that the uh, team like Battalion play against, they're going to be up for it. And, you know, we can't see our guys that up for it with the shots on net, but we've just got to continue to do that, and we will be rewarded. Guarantee it. Dan Snyder battling for the puck with Woods, gets the puck into the corner, back for it is Hodges. Hodges stopped by Peter Campbell. Campbell trying to tie it up in his skates. Hodges took a hit from Snyder. Puck rolls around the board. Snyder deep, watched by Woods. Centered out front. Davidson looking for an open man, trying to dance behind the net. Side of the goal. Good shot there by Peter Campbell from a sharp angle as Woods and Snyder have words at the whistle. Well, they had words there in the first period. Then uh, and Cooter had prevailed in there. Referee is the pride of Barry, Rick Scaly, the linesman John McCutcheon, and Darren Price. Second period action. We play 29 seconds. Hope you're enjoying this. OHL game between the Owen Sound players in the dark uniforms and the expansion Brampton Battalion in the white and green and I like their road uniforms a lot better than their home uniforms. Well I didn't get down to see them uh, play down in in Brampton. I don't know what they look like but yeah I do like their uh, road uniform. The dark uniforms just a too, little bit too much of that funny color green but to each his own. Nice to see something refreshingly different instead of all these black uniforms nowadays. There's a steal. Sean Avery with a shot, what a left oh, hand oh, by Chan. I'll tell you, they got to be careful. Those could be games winning saves by Chan. <laughs> Sean Avery, he knew where he wanted to put it. And again, you watch, watch Sean. They've got the book in him, the, the roof it on him. But boy, I'll tell you, good move. Back in, nobody challenging. Look at that shot, look at that save. Good save, David Chan. That came at the 39 second mark. And already two shots on goal for the Platers in the first 39 seconds of period two. Avery takes the draw against Spencer. And that's one thing with Sean Avery. He's got a good wrist shot. He can bury that puck quick on you. Thompson inside the own sound line going to the net is McSwain. Thompson checked off the puck. McSwain in to help him out. And McSwain tried to refeed Thompson. That didn't work. And the Platers will break out. On the right side, Jan Salk knocked it ahead, no, but okay. Avery offside could not quite keep his leg back. And we played 58 seconds, so we've had a, what, three whistles already in the opening 58 seconds, but 
The Owen Sound players with another good scoring opportunity early, as we saw Peter Campbell with a breakaway early in the opening period. And again, you know, we, we talked off camera. If Peter scores on that first shift of the game, does it tell much of the change of complexion of this game? But again, the uh, chance is going to get tougher as this game goes on. They better bury some, get some quick on it. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Brampton bring the puck to center ice. Van Lusen couldn't get it across. It's Snyder. There's a wrist shot. Pad saved by Champ. Puck came straight back out, but Davidson was tied up. Now Randy Davidson has the puck behind the net. Looking out front for Peter Campbell. Campbell into the corner. Davidson throws it back for Campbell. He cycles it deeper yet to Snyder. Snyder to the end boards. Nobody was there yet. You can tell they practice out cycling because well, that's where the man should have been. That's exactly right. Just a little late getting there. Snyder left the puck there for Campbell. Backhand shot. Chan with the pad save. It's loose to the side of the goal. Oh, squeezing the pads. He got the whistle. He got it. I don't think the puck has come over center ice yet in the Owen Sound uh, territory. Just once we see some marks of the blue line. That's but exactly about all it is. It's a nice little uh, late setting up. There's uh, first Dave Siciliano, now Brian O'Leary. Five shots on goal already for the Owen Sound players. In the opening minute and 35 seconds here of period two, all the scoring in the first period so far. Face off one neatly by Bateman. It's interesting. Here we are just coming in the first two minutes, and, and the own sound coach is just rotating the two top lines here to try to get them solid goal. A little momentum, too. Sharp angle shot there by Woolard. No problem for Champ. And, uh, you know, there comes a stage that junior hockey players become a frustrated young lot. Now, we should, shouldn't be anywhere near that yet. Oh, but, no. but, but, yeah. And, and, of course, the Old Sound coaching staff, they're starting to press already. Six shots to none for the players. Mind yeah. you, they're playing the percentage. They're saying, you know, both these lines right now are putting the pressure on. Eventually, one's going to go in. Now, they're going to get the third and fourth line out there with no question, but... If it doesn't happen, a little frustration, as you say. Bateman lost the faceoff this time to Avery. Back to the point. Hopavari trying to tee it up. That was blocked by Bateman. Ends up going over the glass and out of play. And a souvenir to a fan from Jackson in attendance yeah, here at the Harry Lumley Bateman. from Jackson. Look at what that Bateman's playing, too. Again, he just challenged. He just skated right at Hopavari. And, of course, he created that deflection. So they'll face it off where the puck was deflected out of play from. Bateman against Avery. Avery will try to pull it back. He does win the draw. Hopavari with a shot that went wide. Bounces out the near side. Woolard couldn't drag it through. Checked by Hanchuk. Centered out front for just a moment. Lost by Maleko. Then passed down the middle to Torres. Torres has one of the two Brampton goals. Torres trying to feed it across. Down is Roberts. He's going to hang on to that. But a nice job by Torres trying to feed the winger on the near side. Exactly. And I tell you, the uh, it's a situation like that, all of a sudden, you know, you're the goaltender down there for over two minutes that you haven't even seen a player down here, let alone your own. All of a sudden, the opposition down here, get a shot in that. A lot of times that goes in. Talked a lot about uh, Brampton, an expansion franchise, the other expansion team, Mississauga, at home at the Hershey Center tonight against Toronto St. Mike's Majors and Ottawa's in Belleville this evening. And, of course, the bet is how many games will Ottawa lose this schedule? Boy, oh Ten? Boy. They look pretty good, don't they, the 67s? I'd have to say right now, Barry and Ottawa, one of those two cities are going to host the Memorial Cup. Off the pipe. That was closer than it looked. No, yeah. it was that. Parthenay at center. Throws it down the wing. Leachy tried to throw it in. Didn't get past Flaxy. The puck ends up deep in Brampton territory. Ward down there against Parthenay. Parthenay and Ward at the end boards in the corner. Trying to dig it free, and Joel Ward comes up with it. 18 years old today. Dumps it back. Going to get some help from Sullivan. Kept in by Flaxy. Menard got a stick on it. Flaxy can't keep it in again. Got some help from his defensive partner, Dompkowitz. He waits for Menard to get onside. Tried to feed it across Ward to Menard. No, nope, didn't get there. Just couldn't get the handle on it. Leachy got the puck over the glass and out of play, so another stoppage. Two minutes, 59 seconds expired in the second period. There's Joel Ward celebrating his 18th birthday. One of the best 15th round draft picks you're ever going to come across. You got that right. From the Don Mills system. And Joel was sat down uh, about a month and a half ago for a game in Windsor. And ever since then, he has been a bull in a china shop. If you're really interested and really love the game of hockey and playing at this level here, and you're not playing to your potential, the coach said, okay, fine, here, chart a few games for us like that. Yeah. That's got to do something to you. It's got to tear at your guts in there. 
It sure did with Joel. He's played well. Super. Vukovic throws the puck deep. Davidson couldn't get to it. Battling with Woods there. Centered out front. Off the skate of his spinning Thompson. Never did find the handle. And it's thrown to center and Stevenson's there. Across to Vukovic. Vukovic looking back to Stevenson. Decided not to. Throws it off the glass and ends up at center ice. Knocked high down by gun. Peter Campbell. Good yep. Time. Referee calls it a high stick and then we'll face it off again. A flurry of whistles here to begin period two. It was Torres scoring at 2.59 of the opening period from Havel. And then Bateman, Jeff Bateman, at 11.33 of the opening period again from Havel. And those are the two goals that you see there in the score sheet. 2-0. We're now into the second period and shots on goal this period are 6-2 in favor of the Platers. One of, the, one of the problems, you got so far, number nine, Spiza, hasn't really factored into the, the game too much tonight. But again, watch this kid because, you know, it, you could get back in the third period where the next goal is going to win the game, and he could be the one bearing it. Well, I'm sure everybody in Brampton and the GTA knows the story about uh, Jason Spezza. But because he's a 15-year-old, just like Rico Fata when he played as a 15-year-old exactly in right. Sault Ste. Marie, he goes into the draft this coming summer, and uh, the worst team in the league this year is going to pick first, and you know. Spets is going to be the kid they're going to want now. Oh, without question. Does Brampton make a deal with Mississauga to keep him, or does Mississauga scoop him up? That, that, that's a lot of tough decisions to make there for somebody. Exactly right. You see the attention given to the strap of goaltender David Chant. Chant has the three wins. He's been in goal for the three victories the battalion have earned this year. He has a 4.54 goals against average. The real problem, their team goals against average, is 5.30. And that means you got to score six goals just to win a game, and yeah, that's, that's pretty right. tough. That makes it tough. And this one thing we talked with Corey Roberts, like Corey's goals against his, you know, what, 5.4 or whatever. And there's Corey in there. And then, uh, and I'm sure the coaching staff is working with him on there, but sometimes you get that habit of uh, uh, you're down too much like that all the time. It's a hard habit to break. So play will resume with the face-off between center ice in the blue line just on the Owen side Owen sound side of center it'll be Spencer take the face off against Snyder puck control by Snyder the Elmira native to center ice hooked by Spezza. Snyder went down on top of him was Thompson and Snyder still <laughs> put the puck ahead Hodges backhands into the boards but not out kept in there by Davidson chipped out to center ice Domkowitz watched by Thompson Thompson and Domkowitz into the corner. Knocked down is Thompson. Buck is center but misses all the white sweaters and is picked up by Snyder. Three on two. Snyder inside the line with Davidson and Peter Campbell. Campbell goes to the puck. Good job there by the Brampton defense to get back in time. Hodges did a great job because Peter Campbell was coming in wanting to be that late man coming in, but Hodges wouldn't let Danny Snyder pass him the puck. Good Davidson job. Davidson in the corner, this time against Woods. Behind the net. And it's picked up by Spezza. Spezza with a flip and it's clear down the ice. No ice seemed to be a shot on goal. Brampton and Owen Sound both changing on the fly. Domkowitz two throws it off the touch. boards. Couldn't be touched over center by Avery, or it would have been a two-line pass. Once again, as Domkowitz hit the referee with the puck that time. Battalion inside the zone. Drop pass. Not a great one, but it was kept in momentarily by Malenko. Center ice. Picked up by Barker. Barker to the blue line. And got the return pass. Barker with his shot. Scores! Barker! I tell you, <laughs> again, we're going to see this, and I'm going to get on Corey's case here. He comes out and he stays in his crouch like that. That doesn't get through him. That's a bad goal. Shouldn't score from there. 3 nothing Battalion. 4.48, the time of the goal by Brian Barker, the former Barry Colt. And watch the replay on this. Good work at our blue line. Some of these guys should have been sitting on their can. But when you shoot from out there, I just missed the shooter. For 16, again, Brian Barker, assisted by number 21, Aaron Van Lusen. Time of the goal, 4 minutes, 48 seconds. When you see the goal to the down on one knee, he's not ready for that eighth of the season, assisted no, by course, Aaron right. Van Lusen no, at 4 minutes, 48 seconds. Oh, we, we didn't seconds. change Corey on there, but... Now playing goal for the Owen Sound well Raiders, number tonight. 1. And, uh, take nothing away from Branson. They're taking advantage of what uh, he's given them. So a goal to the change by Dave Cisliano. And the Owen Sound players put in their veteran, Curtis Sanford. Sanford has a 4.03 goals against average. Curtis, eight wins, seven losses, three ties, and a .900 save percentage. Well, we had talked earlier on, on Curtis, the uh, 
when the team wasn't going that well, the uh, save percentage was down around 872. But Curtis is that good a goaltender. We knew darn well he was going to bring it up. And then that's what he that's what he brings to the game, brings to the rink. Curtis Sanford, of course, uh, born in Owen Sound. Seventh round pick in 96. Eligible in 1999 for the NHL draft. He's 5'10", 176 pounds. And has played, uh, for the most part, very well this year. Oh, well, he's, had, he's had a few moments, but everybody does. Hey. How about that 1-1 overtime tie with the Ottawa 67s, the first home game of the regular season? Well, you got that right. He was <clears> phenomenal <throat> that night. I tell you, when the opposition, a coach like Brian Kilray says, you know, that's the reason why they didn't get the two points that night, you know he's right. So, but Cur Curtis has the respect of all the opposition, players and coaching staff alike. So exit Corey Roberts, enter Curtis Sanford, the goaltending change at 448 of period two. This is not the game plan that the Owen Sound players really wanted. They wanted to have Brampton changing their goaltending by this, yeah. this time in the second period. But there's a crossbar! What a drive that was, and I hope we get to see. I think that was Woolard who almost put the puck through the net. Chad Woolard really teed that one up, coming down the left side. And most of the fans at the north end of the Harry Lumley Bayshore thought it was they in. They thought it was in. Again, Chad Woolard, every every game out, just improved. There's Chad right there. And watch this replay. It's just improving every time out. Like, he's, he's into it right now. There's the feet across. But again, see the secret? We're playing the whole ice surface. We open the ice up, but that he cranked that one. Wow. I'd say that was a pro shot. Here's Avery feeding Woolard again. Woolard, bad angle, goes behind the net. Center it out front. It's loose there. Flaxy with a shot. He put it wide after the feed from Salt. Avery's got it. Owen Sound know they've got to get something started here. Trailing 3-0. That's offside at the blue oh, line. Oh, way offside, yeah. Shots are 22-10, to 10, and Owen Sound are trailing 3-0. 3-0. Well, again, it just wasn't... Uh, we call a spade a spade. It wasn't good goaltending in the own sound end. Then I give Brampton credit. They took advantage of the chances they had. They put it in the net. So 14:45 left here in period two. You're watching Owen Sound players hockey, players and the Brampton Battalion, the Harry Lonely Bayshore Community Center. Gary on with Glenn, the coach Juniper. Hope you're enjoying the game to this point. Spetsa lost the face off to Snyder. It's picked up by Bukovic. Nick Bukovic just threw it ahead, right in the stick of Hamchuk. He couldn't get it out, though. Snyder keeps the puck in. The feed is for Peter Campbell. Sent it out front. Backhand shot by Vukovic. And Chan had to be alert to make that stop. And again, it, it just got to be... Vukovic made a good play in there and taking the center slot there and going down in and just deflected on there. There's Mr. Chan right there. He knows the camera's on him. Hey, he, he's playing well in there. He's going to get better. As this game goes on, he's going to get even tougher in there. To the face off to the left of Chant. Snyder against Spezza. And face off not done properly. One of the Brampton players moving prematurely. That'll make them put a new centerman in against Snyder. And the fans now trying to get their Owen Sound players moving. Who's Puck? Still along the boards of the Brampton zone. Back to the point. Stevenson couldn't keep it in. Nick Vukovic back at his own line. Bothered all the way by Spezza off the glass at center. Almost hit the referee. Moving up is Harrison. He backhands the puck in. And maybe we see the Owen Sound players begin to pick up the physical. Well, I think they've got to do that, too. Look out! Oh, Spezza was hit by Snyder. Low bridge there. And all of a sudden, Owen Sound taking the body. Davidson with a feed to center. Peter Campbell trying to split the defense. Almost got through with the puck. Parthenay just recovered at the last second to knock it away. Back at center ice. Spezza wants to get to the bench. He meanders inside the line. Drop pass to no one. Now Spezza will go to the bench. Shot in by Campbell. He wants to change as well. And five players make that four players come over the boards. Deep in his own zone, it's Hodges. Hodges carries the puck to center ice, got over the red line, dumps it in. Nope, sorry, it hit a player at the Brampton bench and didn't quite get where Hodges wanted it Again, to. once you start picking up the physical play, now Mr. Hodges that time, as soon as you saw Joel Ward come into the zone, it's a hot potato, they got rid of it. Well, Dan Snyder there is a 20-year-old knocking a 15-year-old on his camp. And uh, 
Dan. Well, of course, that's the thing that Dan Snyder brings to the game, brings to the rink every night. And he plays the game the way it should be played. Now, right now, it's still middle of the second period, but Owen Sound better get a goal here soon if they want to get in this hockey game. Nice lead pass from Menard. Menard shot blocking glove save by Champ. Rebound to Barrett. Barrett didn't get any wood on it, and it just rolled to Menard. Menard throws it back for Ward. Ward in the corner, left it there. Sullivan comes in against Barker. They hold the puck in the Brampton corner. Referee says play it. Referee does not want to whistle the play. This is where trouble, though, starts yeah, sometimes with a push exactly and shoving. The words out of my mouth there. Sometimes you let that go on a little too long. So. Papavari keeps it in, ends up deep in the zone. Now behind the net. Owen Sound doing everything but scoring. Backhander to the line. Glove pass. Love it. Yeah, good call. Touched by Ward, and that'll bring the face off outside the zone. Shot zone goal 24 to 11. And it was 16 to 7 after one period in favor of Owen Sound. And however, you can have all the shots in the world. The final results, how many you put up in the clock in the middle of the ice here? Avery against Bateman. Avery wins the draw. Spins with the puck on his back end over the blue line. Puts on the brakes, throws it across. Domkowitz hurries across, pushes the puck into the corner. Waiting for it there was Woolard. It got by him. Avery back for Woolard off the skate, intercepted and thrown down the ice. Ice yeah, indicated. That should go for icing, yeah. We'll go all the way. Kyle Flaxy hurries back, touches the puck, and we'll do it all over again with the draw deep in Brampton territory. 12 minutes, 13 seconds left in the period. Number 10, Torres, who had the first goal of the hockey game. Again, you see Jan Salk now playing the right side on there. I just wonder how much he's really familiar with that right wing. Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, nothing Jan Salk has done so far has disappointed me in an Owen Sound oh, uniform. Not at all. I like his physical play. I, I like his puck sense. And he goes after it there. Avery and Salk couldn't get to it, and it's Torres. Lost the puck, just let it sit there. Avery gave it to Woolard. That went off the skate and ended up going wide. Back to the point, Flax, he throws it deep. Off the boards for Torres. Torres backhands it out this time. Domkowitz at his own line. Off the boards, Flaxy. Flaxy had to go off Torres, push it ahead for Salk. Torres there along the boards in front of his own bench. Salk with a bump on Hanchuk. Domkowitz in his own zone. Didn't get any wood on it. Not Picked up top. there by Havel. Havel looking for an open man. Back to the point, oh. and that split the defenseman. You see more and more of this blind passing in the OHL, and... I know sometimes you expect someone to be there, but boy, you got to have a look. Uh, you got that right. And how many times? Chan right. Waller tried to get himself position there. He just yeah. couldn't get the, and they wasn't allowed to get the stick down in there. And a little bit of frustration just starting to show there with Waller. I mean, he could have two goals already today. Yeah. Any other game, he would have two goals. Barker at center. Lucky for the lead pass and the breakaway pass for Reynolds. It didn't get through that time. Along the boards in the neutral zone, kicked ahead by Hanchuk. Look go. We got about six players over there. Yeah, along right, the right now looks like a good street hockey game. There, yeah. Flax, he just went down with a. He got his shot right in the mouth. Well, we're going to have a high sticking penalty assessed, and then for the third time in the hockey game, it is going to be the Owen Sound Platers power play unit on the ice. It's about time to start connecting on the power play. It's Sean Avery with seven power play goals. Chad Ward has five. Peter Campbell has four. Jan Salk has four. Well, they've got the people, obviously, to put the puck in the net. And it's just a matter. And it's not that they haven't had the chances uh, so far today. You know, if we look back on this game, and Brampton should hang on to win, we're going to look at power play opportunities. Game in and game out, special teams. You can always analyze the game a lot of times by the special teams. So with 10 minutes and 50 seconds left in the second period, Brampton leading 3-0 for the third time tonight, the Owen Sound power play. Avery with the puck at his own zone decides to send it back. We now have four forwards as Snyder is playing the right point, the extra forward. Here's Avery inside the line. Nice move to get around to Harrison. Puts on the brakes. Went rink wide. Dangerous pass. It, it was very dangerous. Snyder. Snyder at the right point. The extra forward takes the pass from Peter Campbell. Back to Peter Campbell. Campbell moves in. Take the shot. Didn't quite do what he wanted with it, but maintains possession. Davidson back toward the blue line, and Snyder can't keep it in. Boy, they're not using the whole 
ice Not service. Not a top. Shot in by Vukovic. Racing in quickly is Davidson. Davidson has it off the goaltender's stick to Peter Campbell. To Avery. Back to the point to Snyder. Back to Avery. Snyder. Rolling puck that he shot. That hit somebody out front. Ends up in the corner. Vukovic is there. To Avery behind. Parthenay watching Avery. Peter Campbell. Snyder. Back to Peter Campbell. One minute left in the power play. Snyder. Slap shot. Deflected. Chant the save. Rebound. Chant's got it with his... No, they scored. I thought Chant hit it with his puck. Yeah, but he didn't have it complete. You're going to see this on the replay. He didn't have complete possession on it. And I'm sure if Peter Campbell came in like that, it was still loose. He put it in there. Time of the goal, 10-16, a power play marker. And, of course, you're going to see this right now. And, again, nothing else but the puck in play. We've said how many times. Watch this. Great camera work, guys. Did he get the puck? Did he get it smothered? No, it was still Rick Charlie hadn't blown it down. The referee's right on the line there. Hey, I, I'm a goalie. The fact was the puck was the, smothered. Uh, it was smothered. He didn't get the whistle to his mouth yep. in time. The goaltender, Chance, got a good beep there. Yep. But it's a power play goal, and the players are on the score sheet, trailing 3-1 to one as the puck goes off the roof here. But I'll tell you, it took 26 shots before they get one behind. Players' him. goal, his 17th of the season, scored by number 12, Peter Campbell. <laughs> Assisted by number 21, Randy Davidson. <laughs> and by number 11, Sean Avery. Time of the power play goal, 10 minutes, 16 seconds. Back to live action, 9.35 left in the second period. Here comes Joel Ward down the right side. Ward tried to center it. Good job there by Hodges to get a piece of that pass. Well, Ward telegraphed that pass yes. all the way in from the blue line in. And right now, if you're Brampton and you're Stan Butler, you just hope that your team doesn't sag. They have no reason to let down. Not at all. They still got a 3-1 lead. That's only one goal. So once again, officially, it was Peter Campbell on the power play, his 17th of the year. Davidson and Avery pick up the assists. You know, if it takes the players another 30 minutes to score the second goal, they're going to lose this game. The game. That's yeah. right. That's right. Shots on goal, 26 to 11 right now. <laughs> Just past the halfway mark of the hockey game. And the team with 11 shots leads 3-1. I, I fully believe that Brampton haven't had 11 shots and too many go uh, players in the OHL so far this year and have got three goals on it. No, that's a good good point. Good point. Havel has a couple of assists, but uh, couldn't stay on side to make well, the pass. Yeah, he put himself on side, but not getting possession of the puck, and, and his feet was definitely over there. Trying to feed Bateman, and this line's looked pretty good tonight. Oh, have they ever? That little Havel, I don't know what size he is. You got a, the stats on him, but boy, I tell you, he brings some good hustle to the game. Lucas Havel is 5'10", 165 pounds, and ended with the Czech Republic and was their uh, import draft pick. Yeah. He's doing a good job for him tonight. Looks like one of those guys, 5'8", going on 5'10". I think that's exactly what he is. So. <laughs> I don't know if sometimes many of these little guys on the skates or not. Puck ends up in the Owen Sound corner. Curtis Sanford, who's got cold feet, comes out to play it off the glass. Sanford came into the game... 4.48 of the second period with a score of 3-0 Brampton. And I don't think he's had a shot on goal. I really don't. I don't think he has. Picked up along the boards by McSwain. He can't get started. Snyder can't get away. Pardon me, that was Avery. Look out, knocked down. Here's a breakaway for Spezza in alone. Spezza faking. Shot scores. Oh, a big goal. Uh, you got to watch this, fan. We said before about this kid. All of a sudden, could be a game winning goal right there but this kid knew exactly this kid's 15 years old you see the size number nine in there tell me they aren't happy with him 6'2 185 pounds and again this, this is this is just a bad you've got to play just you've got to play the man you got to take that man off the puck in there good move on Curtis was he he throws Curtis down at it nice deep in the net Tell you, give Brampton all the credit. They just gave up a goal there, made a 3-1. Now they got the three-goal lead back again. Barker and Thompson pick up the assists. And I mentioned Curtis Sanford hadn't had a shot on goal while well, he's had one he's now. He's got one now. That's right. And it's 4-1, Brampton. Peter Campbell 
Trying to get around big number 19, Parthenay. That didn't go very far. Van Lucent trying to get it out. Couldn't get it past the point man. Long shot. And Chant made sure he leaned on the trapping glove that time. You're darn right. 8-14 left in period two. And uh, after Owen Sound connected on the power play, Brampton come back quickly to restore their three-goal lead. It's 4-1. A little frustration here, I think, maybe from Peter Campbell on Parsnay. Parsnay's a big kid. Parsnay just did what a defenseman should do. He just rode Peter right into the, into the corner. Nothing happened in front of the net. Snyder, Davidson, Peter Campbell up front to be the veteran Barker. Who knows this rink well after playing with the Barry Colts for the last couple of seasons. He should. Barker, I thought it won the draw, but Snyder's still headed. There's a shot. That's blocked. Good opportunity for Peter Campbell looking for his 18th. Here's Barker leading the rush. Can't split the defense, but tries to drag it through. Goes to the end boards with Barrett. Barker, Barrett. Barrett has the puck off the end boards. Papavari trying to catch up with it. Good hustle by Reynolds to keep it in. Into the corner. Van Lucent took a check there from Barrett. Stepping out with the puck is Barker. Shot on the short side. Trying to center it that time was Van Lucent. He took a check from Barrett. Snyder holding the puck along the boards. Four players in the corner. It's Barrett who moves it ahead. Davidson to center. He'll flip it in as Peter Campbell is breaking. Campbell in the corner. Tried to center it. Off the stick of Van Lucent. Snyder back to the point. Dompkins had to go to his forehand. There's the shot off the goal post. <laughs> Deflected by Davidson and hit the goal post and stayed out. And they're just shaking their head down there. I'll tell you. <laughs> Randy's coming off just shaking his head to the bit. But again, you know, it's, it's got to be a character builder for Owen Sound there too. You know, they've got to continue to see, you know, have you got the, the wherewithal to keep pressing this team right to the final whistle? Well, we're going to find out. So Owen Sound have hit two goal posts and one crossbar. Yeah. Like Domkowitz. But again, you know, with Chan in there, when you're playing well, you know as well as I do, when you're playing well, those goal posts, are, they're with you. They're three feet wide. No so question about it. Sullivan, Menard, and Ward up front for Dave Siciliano. From the draw, Ward's got the puck. Determined to get a shot on goal, even though he fell. Donkowitz keeps it in. They're taking chances early now, aren't they? Out front, oh. Ward couldn't get a shot away. Thrown deep. Back behind his own goal goes Woods. Woods swings it around the fence. Flaxy trying to keep it in. Can't. It's carried out by Kearns. He got some help from Spezza. Spezza dropped it off at the line. That's the Leachy idea, Chris. Down. Menard hitting Leachy, and Leachy went down. So did Menard. And it's Joel Ward with the puck at center. With Menard. Look out. They almost knocked one another down. Menard throws it deep. Back is Woods. He's hit by Sullivan. These are the rookies doing all the That's hard work right. out here for the most part. Ward a sophomore. Send the message to everybody else on the bench in here. Hold the puck in the corner. Again, I hate to see this go on too long because you know what uh, happens. If again, uh, yeah, you get a mix-up down there. And now, of course, the Brampton bench yelling for the face-off to come outside the blue line as the defenseman snuck in just a little bit. But a pretty good shift there for Sullivan Menard playing with the sophomore Ward. No, I, a great shift. But again, you know, Chris comes over, just takes a man right out, and that's how it's done. Six minutes, 21 seconds remaining in period two. There's the score in favor of the Brampton Battalion. Avery, Salt, and Woolard. There's Stevenson and Vukovic, the point man. Face off thrown back to the point. Vukovic just backhands it into the corner. Avery hit by Hanchuk. Puck is behind the net. They battle for it. Controlled by the Platers. Centered out front. Knocked away to the blue line. And hustling back is Stevenson. Stevenson up the wing for Avery. Avery looking for Salk. Salk going to have to hurry. Salk and Hanchuk bump in the corner. Nice job by Hanchuk. Throws it momentarily at least. The far side. Maleka moves across to the point. Vukovic with his shot ends up in the near corner. Salk throws it deep. Intercepted by a battalion player. Bateman there's... Havel with a hit knocking Avery down and it's cleared out by Brampton once again. Battalion want to make a change here. They didn't get the icing call they were no. hoping for either. Five and a half minutes to go in period two. Pass to center taken by Woolard with Avery. Avery trails Woolard in. 
Woolard spun around, still maintains possession. Checked there by Maleko. Kicked ahead. Picked up by Thompson. Thompson out of his own zone to center ice. Got to the red line, dumps it in. Sanford stops the puck. First man back is Dave Stevenson. Stevenson pass to the boards. Avery goes rink wide. Too far ahead of Jan Sulker. Would have been a good breakout. Moving up is Stevenson. Thompson carries the puck back inside Owen Sound territory. Into the corner goes uh -huh. McSween. Tried to throw it back, and now it's Avery. Avery to the blue line, trying to fool the defense. He gets knocked down. Chad Willard was there, but Avery lost the puck. And a long lead pass onside to Spets again. Spets in on goal. Oh, Good what a save. save. By Curtis Antine. Sanford got that right pad down and made a great save as Spezza had his second breakaway of the period. And he scored in the first one. Here's Spezza again. Spezza in Gretzky's office, trying to center it. Trying to step away from Hopavari. And now Hopavari is going to get a holding penalty here. How confident is this Spezza anyway? You know, for a kid 15, like, boy, he doesn't panic in there. He gets a puck back in there. He knows he's got nowhere to go. So, as you say, he got into Gretzky's territory. He wants to set something up. And he drew that penalty. No question about it. Got behind the net, did a little stick handling, bought a little time, had a little look to see what was going on. That's why the NHL scouts oh, are talking boy, about I'll this kid already. They're drooling. Watch, watch the replay on this one. Again, Curtis stand tall on this one. If they go up 5 1, boy. Turn the lights out. Turn the lights out. But again, watch it. How that, why is that kid cheating so badly? He tries it to dig again at Curtis, and he just stays there, keeps the blocker out there, and know where to go with it that time. Well, Baron Hopavari got caught. Oh, did Spencer he ever. got between them. And for the next two minutes or less, the Platers shorthanded. Off the glass, stopped at the point by Maleko. Maleko, acquired from the Oshawa Generals in the expansion draft. He's been steady on defense. Back to Maleko. Maleko with a low drive off a stick, went wide, picked up by Vukovic. Vukovic goes to his forehand but couldn't clear it out. Snyder able to get the puck to center ice. This is where the Platers need a shorthanded goal here oh. just to prove they're in this That's hockey exactly game. Exactly right. Clear down the ice by Owen Sound. Look at Snyder all the way down for checking. Snyder and Menard, the four checkers. <laughs> Broken up by Domkowitz at center. Now Ward over the boards to replace Captain Snyder. Pass that was actually behind Van Lusen. Brought it over the line, but it's offside. 111 left in the Hopavari penalty. Three minutes and 32 seconds remaining in period two. There's a good look at Van Lusen. And of course, you're going to see the speeds out there again with no question. But the. Uh, Right now, you know, Brampton, we've got all we, we can handle right now with this Brampton <laughs> team in here. They don't look like a first-year OHL team. Mm. And these teams, you know, as the season goes on, sure, they may not make the playoffs, whatever else, but as the season goes on, the experience they're gaining from it. Jan Sulk a little disappointed that Darren Price dropped the puck, and he <laughs> had no idea it was coming. So Sulk... So I'll tell him I was half turned. I wasn't yeah. set for it. He lobbies for another face-off <laughs> and, and wins. And then this puck is bounced down, controlled by the battalion and shot in. And look out, they're shooting after Price yeah. now. Domkowitz wings it off the glass and out. One minute left in the Brampton power play. Just over three minutes to go in the second period. Brampton leading the game 4-1. to one. Look, at we have two wingers at the Owen Sound blue oh, line. Wow, I, I can understand one guy, yeah, but two I, guys? Look, at here's a breakaway for Ward. Scores! You call it. Gary Did you hit the nail right in the head there? A short-handed goal? Now you're back in the hockey game. And this is one of the problems putting one, especially the big problem, putting two up there. What happens? You leave yourself short-handed coming over to your zone. And I just can't understand. You watch the theory on this. No. We've got two wingers up here. Actually, Brampton's short-handed in their zone right now. A turnover like that. And again, upstairs, that's where you got to put it in that point. The camera angle didn't show it, but the wingers were at the Owen Sound blue line. That left three players to bring the puck up. They got out, man. Oh, yeah. Coming out of your zone. I don't know if Joel Ward has scored a more important goal if Owen Sound can get back in this game now. 30 seconds left in the Brampton power play. Maleko throws it to the right side for Torres. Torres couldn't get the handle, and it's thrown deep into battalion territory. See, again, and here we come right back at it again. 
what you do now, of course, you just bring these, these your two defensive back, take away that zone, and now what happens? Icing. You, you got an icing. Like, it's stupid. Yeah, I, I don't understand the two wingers because now if you're defending against these two wingers on the power play, do you keep your defenseman just simply wide? Oh, well, of course, all they need to do is just stay this side of the center ice and then just keep in their lane. Sure. The puck's got to go through you, just exactly what happens there. If, if you miss it, it goes down for icing. Now you got to face off in their zone. It's just, it's not smart. It, I don't know, Stan maybe watched too many lacrosse games in there. But. <laughs> now he's, he's giving those wingers hell for that down there. It's his fault. It's a stupid play, Stan. There's no theory to it. I don't care what you say. I can understand one winger hanging at the other team's blue line to maybe take a defenseman out of the play. That, that's exactly right. But you've got, you've got, you can't leave yourself in a shorthanded situation going to your zone when you've hit the power play. It doesn't right. make sense. Well, it sure didn't on that. Uh, well, that series. backfires on. Yeah, but does that one out of ten times. And it's a long shot. Chance turns it aside. Keep in mind. Owen Sound still short-handed for the next three seconds. Hopavari standing at the penalty bench. He returns to the ice, and the Platers' power play, pardon me, the Brampton power play is over. The Platers score a short-handed goal to close the gap to 4-2. to two. And, uh, wow, that's a huge goal. Joel big, Ward. Big goal is right. Happy birthday, Joel. Pass to center for Avery, two on one. Avery's got Willard with him. There's the shot high over there. Came right back out front again. And it's cleared by Reynolds off the boards and out. Papavari to his partner Domkowitz. Domkowitz looks down the middle, and Salk could not quite reach it. That'll be icing, but the goaltender didn't look, didn't know. Oh. Negates the icing call. Hodges fell, hustling back. See, there's inexperience again. The exactly, goalie's got to yeah. look for that linesman's arm. Oh, Hopavari with a high stick, almost an elbow. 130 left, and here they're out, man, again, four on two. Brampton were changing. Peter Campbell, and he broke the stick <laughs> in half, and he couldn't get his shot on goal. Boy, that was a bad change it by the battalion. Terrible change. Back to the point. That points with the drive. Chance to save the rebound. Just knocked wide by Salt. Here's Peter Campbell looking out front. Pinching in from the point is Domkowitz. Can't keep the puck in. He could get it. No, no tripping penalty there. I thought there might be one coming. 70 seconds left in the second period. Domkowitz stops the puck outside his blue line. Has a look. Put it right off a leg. And it's Hopavari now. All the way back. For checking is Thompson. Thompson steals the puck behind the net. Tried to throw it out front. 54 seconds left in the period. I don't know what Chris was doing that time, but he fell asleep. Backhanded along the boards by Campbell. Snyder couldn't get to it. Now Curtis Sanford's seen enough. Oh, he wants to yeah, clear it out himself. It. Randy Davidson. And he can't move the puck. 35 seconds to go. Owen Sam with problems in their own zone. Here's the battalion with another steal. Nice job that time by Domkowitz. Wouldn't let the puck come out. Boy, Owen Sound really struggling yeah. here in their own zone. Ever. 25 seconds left. Snyder's got a free pass with 20 seconds to go. Snyder to Peter Campbell on the far side. It's Davidson. Campbell, there's a couple of sticks on the ice. One Brampton stick, one broken Peter Campbell stick. Snyder sending it out front, didn't reach Davidson. Seven seconds to go. Time for one quick rush by the battalion. Over center ice is Thompson. He just dumps it in. That nah, should he, do it. He's content going to address him with a two-goal lead. So it's a 4-2 Brampton lead after 40 minutes of hockey. Shots on goal. 15 by Owen Sound that period. And seven by the Brampton battalion. That was a wild period of hockey, well, Glenn Juniper. Well, no question, and nothing changed too much. You know, we're still doubling them on shots, more than doubling on shots. But again, now we've started to put a couple of pucks in, and they know that he can put the puck past uh, David Chan in there. And I think the, uh, we said earlier, the, uh, it's one of these games that, uh, like the first game uh, Brampton was in here, Onsan had to win it in the third period, and they've got a situation now they've got to win this one in the third period. There was a brief uh, stage there in that second period when Owen Sound started to take the body didn't seem to turn the momentum but I thought it was just something that Brampton didn't expect exactly and uh, you know I'm still a great believer if you got a body contact in the, in the game of hockey and I still think the players play much more aggressive when they play much more aggressive their defensive games much better and of course their offensive games much better so it's 4-2 Brampton Battalion leading the Owen Sound players after 40 minutes of hockey here at the Harry Lumley Bay Shore Community Center don't go away Manny Pava has our second intermission in just a moment 4-2 Brampton leading Owen Sound this is Platers Hockey and Rogers Community Television
Welcome back to OHL Primetime on Rogers Community Television. After two periods of play, the Brampton Battalion surprising the Owen Sound Platers. The score four to two. Now joined by Adam Mayer of the Owen Sound Platers, the right winger who's just been invited to the uh, National Junior Camp. Congratulations, first off. Must be a big throw. Oh, definitely. You know, mm -hmm. anytime you get the chance to uh, to go into an international event and represent your country, and you know, and and have the entire backing of a country, it's unbelievable. And I can't even uh, begin to think what the, what the atmosphere is going to be like out in Winnipeg. And, you know, I'll just have to go there and see, I guess. <laughs> well, how did you learn about it today? Where were you? Actually, I was at home, and uh, I got a call from my mom. She said she heard it on the, the Fan 590 in, uh, in Toronto. And then later on, uh, when I was at the rink, it came off the wire um, into, our, uh, into the hockey office, and I was... Actually, just happened to be up front, and it came off. So it was, uh, you know, it was kind of a, a good situation. Um, your injury. Uh, you're not in the lineup tonight, obviously, by the street clothes. Right. Uh, the injury to the cheekbone. Uh, did you think that did that worry you, and the fact that maybe that might have played a role in not being invited to the camp? Or? Yeah, you know, I was I was worried that you know it, when it first happened that I wasn't really sure how long I would be out for, and if I needed surgery to kind of fix my face up a little bit, but. You know, I was pretty fortunate in the fact that the, the timing, I guess, was just almost right. You know, I'm going to be back uh, in the player lineup for about a week, I guess, before I, I head off to Winnipeg. So um, I was really fortunate. Um, you think maybe it was your summer camp plus the, the Leafs camp that really elevated your status in this? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've, I'm not exactly sure, uh, you know, what it was that, you know, that made me uh, selected to the team. Uh, or to the, not to the team, rather to the selection camp, but, um, you know, I felt that I had a pretty strong camp, uh, both in Toronto and out in Winnipeg in the summer, so, um, you know, I guess from that and from what they've seen from me in the past, you know, helped. Um, your role here in Owen Sound has been more of a, a goal scorer or setting up the goals. You've got 20 points in 12 games, 16 of those assists, but I think after talking with Stan Butler in the first intermission, He's looking for you to be more of a checker. Does that suit you just fine? Oh, definitely. I mean, you're you're willing to take any role on you know on a team like that. And, you know, I know that they go into a tournament with 13 forwards, and if I didn't play in a single game the whole the whole tournament, and we came out of it with a gold medal. I'd be happy. So, you know, I think that's the good thing about those kind of things is you get you know people that are expected to score um, on all their club teams. They're brought in and given a specific role and are able to carry out that role and really. That's what makes good teams win championships. I know you just found out today that you've been invited, but it's probably been in your head, and I'm going to ask you this question about finishing eighth last year. Canada did at the World Juniors. Right. Do you think there would be a lot of pressure on you and uh, the other guys in camp to really show that Canada is one of the premier junior hockey companies, hockey countries in the world? I definitely think that, uh, you know, the fact that it's in Winnipeg, Manitoba, um, and the fact that, you know, Canada hockey has... Um, had such a great track record, you know, over the long haul, and just in the short, it's kind of slipped down. And you know, there's going to be a little bit of a magnifying glass on, uh, you know, on our performance. But I think that you know we're going to have full backing from, you know, 27 million people, and that's that's the most exciting part of every tournament like this. How's your injury? It's, it's healing up great. <laughs> you know, I I'd be out there playing right now, but you know, under the doctor's advice, and you know, they recommend that I don't because uh, you know it could get worse by just a little bump so when do you come back um i talked to our team doctor here in on sound he felt that uh wednesday would be a, a good time to come back any earlier would be perhaps risking uh <laughs> risking injury i guess well uh, so you're back uh, against north bay is that well I, I originally thought i could be back against north bay on sunday but wednesday we're in uh in erie <laughs> so um get to go back there and kind of carry on from where i left off for those of you who don't know him, uh, don't know, uh, Mayor got injured uh, after a hit from Jeff Zare in the corner right. down in Erie. So uh, I'm sure you'll have a few choice words for Jeff. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's not a. I don't think it'll be quite the time for payback, uh, you know, with the upcoming thing. But you know, what goes around comes around in, in, in hockey and in life. So uh, Sean Avery declined an interview today. Um, he didn't want to talk about his demand to be traded. How does that affect the club, though? Um, you know what. Really, there's not a whole lot of uh, knowledge by the team or, or you know, by the guys and what really the, the underlying issues or 
what in fact happened with uh, the management, management with Sean Avery. So I think that we realize that these things happen in hockey, and, and you know, as you get along to play uh, at higher levels, um, you know, you see it all the time in professional sports. And I think it's just part of the game, and we got a lot of mature guys in the room that are able to handle that and go out every night and play hard, uh, no matter what the case is. Adam Mayer, a great hockey player and a great man off the ice. Uh, congratulations again on being invited to the National Junior Camp. Boy, his players wish he was in the lineup tonight. They're losing 4-2 to after two periods of play to Brampton. We'll return with the second intermission on OHL Primetime on Rogers Community Television. Welcome back to OHL Prime Time on Rogers Community Television. We're in the second intermission of play between the Owen Sound Platers and the Brampton Battalion. Now joined by Plater rear guard Dave Stevenson, who has uh, been playing well of late. You turned things around after a shaky start to the season. Why is that? I don't know. I guess it took me a little while just to wake up. I guess smell the coffee, but <laughs> I don't know. I, I, th I think we're just. I think it kind of just took us our whole team just a little while to kind of turn things around to make it look good. So. Especially defensively, well. especially defensively. Yeah, we are turning around. We had a little bit of a rough game in Ottawa, but it, that happens too. So. Um, is your confidence, do you think, the team's confidence especially a little bit higher after going yeah, on? Yeah, I think so too. I think I think we could have beat Ottawa. I think we just, we broke down a bit. We made a couple of dumb plays and the, the reffing was terrible. So, I don't know, you can't really say much about that. I was I was actually wanted you to say something about that later on though, but I want to get to the point where uh, Curtis Sanford has really been playing well. He's certainly on his A game. Oh, he's a sick goalie. He's, probably, he's, he's amazing. That's why we stay in most of our games, because of him. We get 40 shots, and he stops most of them. He plays, he's just been playing great lately. I don't know. Um, you won for the first time on the road in a while um, in Kingston last Friday. The game was a seesaw battle. It looked like you guys weren't going to pull it out, and your road woes would continue, but you guys pulled it out. Uh, is that a big victory for you guys? Oh yeah, that was a real nice victory for us. Like, I don't, they're not even supposed to be all that great, but I think we gave them a little bit too much respect. So, but I, we finally came. We kind of woke up near the end, realizing we, we should really should have beat them worse than what we did. But at least we beat them, so that's a good thing. Have you guys changed anything on the road? To you guys have only won uh, three games on the road, I think. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I think we're just. I don't know what it is about the road. I guess we just haven't been playing. Our legs maybe aren't going or what, but. Uh, we're always ready at home. I don't know what it is. But. Yeah, turning to the home aspect, you only lost once at home. Why yeah. do you think you're, you're the team to beat at home here? I don't know. I don't know why we're so good at home. I guess we just play well here. And Are the teams afraid to come in here in their own sound? Or? I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm not sure about what they think about us. So You yourself, you had a tough game against uh, London last Wednesday. Yeah. You, you hurt your shoulder. How's your shoulder feeling? It's good now. I can move it. So I, I've been playing. I played last weekend, so it's not going to keep me out. No, I think you were on the ice the very next day, though. Yeah, I was. And, uh, what, what happened there? Could you let the fans know? Well, I don't know. I guess there's many stories. I don't know. I, he said he, I strained it after. I don't know. Supposedly, I might have pulled it out and put it back in and went it after, but kind of my buddy saw the tape and they saw the end of the fight so it wasn't too I wasn't too happy about that but yeah, that's all right if so. you missed it, it uh, I guess it happened in a fight with uh, JC and Mathcalf of the London Knights uh, you're known as the one of the tough guys in the league too so is it your role do you think to, to start to fight more against some of the tougher guys in the league I think I should I think that was kind of my role against London because I thought maybe we might have been a little bit edgy going into that game I thought maybe it'd get us wired up and maybe not so a little bit tentative out there so I don't know, I thought that, tried to do what I could for the team, so. Heading into December, uh, you guys are coming off a pretty good month where you played a lot of the top teams in the league and yeah. you came out above 500. Uh, how is that a confidence booster for the team? I don't, I don't really worry about the stats. I think we just had a great month. We played all, most of our games, we've all been playing tight. It's not like we're getting, we get beat, we get blown out. We've been in every game, so I think we're just, by time, we're starting to pick it up now, so. You mentioned officiating earlier, and it seems like uh, the bounces haven't gone your way with the referees. Um, no. <laughs> do you think officiating, does the league have to review some of its officiating rules? I think it might sometimes. Like, some of it, I've, I've been kind of messed around a couple times here, but 
I mean, I guess they got to do their job, so I can't, I'm not going to cry about it, so. Finally, against this Brampton Battalion squad, they've only won three games, but I guess the word from the coaches is you can't take them lightly? No, we can't take people lightly. We've got to go to every night and play hard, so got to play hard tonight. Dave Stevenson, defenseman for the Owen Sound Platers. His club in tough against the Brampton Battalion tonight, and we'll continue with the second intermission right here on OHL Primetime on Rogers Community Television. Second intermission here on OHL Primetime on Rogers Community Television, live from Owen Sound. The Brampton Battalion lead the Owen Sound Platers 4-2 as we get set to start the third. Taking a look at the scoring summary, first for the Brampton Battalion, Brian Barker got on the board at 448, his eighth of the season. The assist going to Aaron Van Leusen. That was the end for Corey Roberts. He was pulled in favor of Curtis Sanford in the Owen Sound goal. Jason Spezza scored to make it 4-1, his 11th of the, suite of the season from Kurt McSween and Scott Thompson at 11:20. At 10:16, though, Peter Campbell put Owen Sound on the board on the power play with the assist going to Sean Avery and Randy Davidson. That was Campbell's 17th of the season. Then Joel Ward scored shorthanded before the second was out on 16:57. His sixth of the season on this, his 18th birthday. Shots on goal, Owen Sound out shooting Brampton so far, 31-14. The third period has started, so let's take it back up to the G-Men who will bring you the action, Glenn Juniper and Gary Hahn. Thanks very much, Manny. Just underway here in the third period. We played 14 seconds, and from the faceoff at center, we've uh, had the puck move down into Brampton territory. We'll have a faceoff now to the left of goaltender David Chant, who had an outstanding 40 minutes of hockey and uh, a power play goal and a shorthanded mark of the only Owen Sound goals to get by him. Oh, yeah. If David Chant isn't on his game here tonight, you know, this score could quite easily be 6 4 in the favor of Owen Sound. We have some premature movement. And it looks like it's going to be Barker moved out of the circle, replaced by number 11, Reynolds. So, pair of 11s, Reynolds and Avery. Avery falls from the draw. Reynolds wins it. Back behind the net is Woods. Off the board, stopped by Domkowitz. Domkowitz at the point. Weak backhand shot didn't get through. Barker with a lead pass for Van Lusen. Van Lusen trying to get around Domkowitz. Shot missed in the short side. Barker is there quickly. But Van Lusen picked up by Owen Sound. Woolard over center. He rang a goal post earlier. Was looking for a winger. There was none there. Well, of course, that was one of those cross patterns. Sean didn't make the crossover. So Brampton with a change here. And Owen Sound trying the quick break on the right side. As Sanford tried to move the puck up quickly for Woolard. And taking the body behind the net. And maybe getting the worst of that was Chad well, I think, Woolard. Yeah, Chad yeah. must be favoring his left arm a little bit. Yeah, that hurt. Flaxy deep in his own zone. I like the way Chad Willers come on to play. Randy Davidson over center. Pass to Avery. Avery inside the line. Slap shot. Didn't go anywhere. Didn't get any wood on it. Davidson. Looking back to the point. Avery's gone to the bench and Snyder's on the ice. 4-2. Brampton lead as we start the third period. Stevenson low drive. Went good, wide. good deflection by Snyder. Just missed the net again. Vukovic throws it deep. Backhander by Maleko. Just got out. Bateman trying to track it down. Once again, it's Maleko. His pass too far ahead of the man, and Brampton will change again. And they leave that right side wide open once again. Peter well, Campbell. Again, one of these late changes nearly cost him a goal. Back to the point. Stevenson with a windup, put it right into the man. There's a race for the puck at center ice now. And Sanford comes out to the blue line and clears the puck away. Campbell at center ice. Got it ahead for Snyder. Snyder trying to dance around the defense when he gets knocked to the ice. Platers change their defense. Long shift there for Randy Davids, and he leaves, and Chris Menard's over the boards. Slap shot, gloved by Sanford off the stick of McSwain. Drop behind the net. Peter Campbell in his own corner. Flips it ahead. Menard took it off his body, threw it down, got it to the line, but not over. Spezza has one goal already. Inside the blue line, looking for Thompson. Checked along the boards, knocked off the puck by Ward. It's cleared by Hopavari. Here moving up is Ward with Sullivan and Menard. Here's the pass to Menard. Good oh, save by Champ. Good, and a good play. Good play by Chris Menard to keep himself wide open for that pass. Hopavari slap shot off the skate of Thompson. He felt that is toward the goal. Champ with another good save. And the plate is now starting to get some chances and starting to play a little more physical. Exactly. And this line did that in the second period and they're continuing to do it right now. You know, it's so funny because I grabbed the game sheet 
from September 30th, the Brampton Battalion's first visit into the Harry Lonely Bayshore Community Center. It was 4-3 Brampton after two periods. And then the third period, Owen Sound out shot Brampton 23 to 11 that night and scored three goals to Brampton's one and won the game six to five. Well, they may have to do the same. Well, they're going to have to do the same thing here tonight if they want to be successful in this game. Face off to the right of Chant, the Whitby native. From the draw, back to the point. Flaxy got it away. It was stopped by Barker. Brian Barker, alternate captain, carries it to center ice. Van Lusen was able to stay on side. Now picks up the puck, watched by Domkowitz. Van Lusen centers it, and back all the way is Brent Sullivan. Sullivan throws it around the boards, picked up by Ward. Ward tried to get it ahead to Menard. Menard had to wait for it, came back and threw it in. Chant stops it behind the goal, picked up by Harrison. Harrison having problems with Joel Ward, and tripped up was Menard. Back to the point, kept in by Domkowitz, bounces to the end boards. Parthenay tried to sweep it around the boards, didn't get anything on it. Checked his Reynolds. Off the glass and down the ice, and both coaches want to make some changes. Oh, exactly. That line was on there for just a little too long that time. They're trying that lead pass to center, but it's always off a skate or off the boards, yeah. and no it clean passes. Flaxy backhands it out. Woolard with a pass behind Avery. Avery has to get to it first to touch it and does negate the icing call. Centered out, and Brampton clear it. Down the right side is Watch Bateman. Watch this one. Bateman's in alone. Here's Bateman in on Sanford. Oh, great Good right leg save. Second shot. And that stopped as well. Back the other way. Salk tried to set it across for Woolard and couldn't get the puck to him. Again, uh, the pass just didn't come up to Jan Salk just as clean as he, it should have been. The time he turned, the man was on him. Really going end to end here now. Four and a half minutes gone in the third period. 4-2, Brampton leading Owen Sound. Salk, one-on-one -on -one against Hanchuk. Waiting for some help. Tried to feed Woolard. Wasn't a great pass. Got it back. Bukovic at the point. Shot. Chant the sticks. And rebound! Oh, Sean just missed the net on it. Back to the point to Stevenson. He keeps the puck in. Back to Vukovic. His shot. And Chant's going to hang on to that and uh, wisely get a face-off. It's a wise thing to do. Now we get a little bit of conversation after the whistle, but it's been an entertaining third oh, period. Oh, I tell you, with no question. But again, the, the Curtis Sanford, if Brampton buries one there, could be all the road. But again, you got to wonder how come two battalions get that that deep behind their defensemen all alone. We played four minutes and 49 seconds in the third period. It was 2-0 Brampton after one, even though Olin Sound outshot them 16-7 in the first period. 4-2 after 40 minutes, as the score indicates right now, and shots on goal 15-7 for the Platers in the second period. Does that make David Chant one of the three stars? Oh, for no question. I would think so. I would hope so. Vukovic at his own line, dances away from one man, hands it to Davidson, who's standing beside him. Davidson throws it across. Puck is turned over to Spezza. Spezza checked by Vukovic, but got it back again. Tried to feed it through. Centering was McSwain, and wisely Curtis Sanford hangs on to that one. So we've got a spirited start here to the third period. Upcoming matches. Tomorrow night, the Owen Sound players will play the Storm in Guelph. And Saturday night, they're home. I think that's home to the Oshawa Generals, isn't uh, it? On yeah. Saturday night. And then Sunday, they travel to North Bay. I'll be in Guelph tomorrow night. Looking forward to that one. And uh, looking forward to seeing uh, the Oshawa Generals and my old friend John Goodwin on Saturday night as well. Oshawa will, in fact, come to play. Well, oh, that'll be a rough game, I'll tell you. They love to play the physical brand. Peter Campbell racing to center ice. He's got Snyder beside him and Davidson. Snyder takes the pass. Davidson goes to the net. It's going to be a penalty. Apparently a stick came up. Yeah, a stick came up and got Danny. Of course, he's going to check to see whether he's bleeding or not. But... Get out the ketchup packet. That's the idea. Peter Campbell's back. Smart enough just to back off. Here's a chance to put him right back in this game. Exactly. With 14 minutes and 36 seconds remaining in period three. And Owen Sound down by a couple of goals. They go on the power play for the fourth time tonight. One for three on the power play. And again, you're just going to see the high stick as you come down. And, it, you know, it wasn't intentional by any means. But again, the player is responsible for your stick. Now he's just going to come over. There's a, he's got him right there. Right there. If you're a big man, you come over with a stick that high, you're going to clip somebody. Well, Jay Harrison's a big boy. Jay Harrison, two minutes for high sticking. Time of the penalty, five minutes, 24 seconds. Jay Harrison, high sticking at 524. 
Willard, Avery, Salk. The fourth forward, Snyder playing left point with Domkowitz. Domkowitz has the puck now. Domkowitz throws it to Salk. There's the shot. Jeff. That's Avery just yep. missing. Snyder pinches in. Behind the net, Salk couldn't handle it. Avery across. He's got Salk in the corner deep. He's got Domkowitz at the point. Domkowitz takes the pass to Snyder. Snyder's got a little room, little time, too. Moves in closer, closer. Trying for the top shelf from the short side. Missed by about a foot. Back to the point to Domkowitz. Domkowitz on his back end feeds Avery. Avery watched closely by Torres. Torres knocked it away from him, but behind the net, Willard collects it. Willard back to Avery in the corner to Domkowitz. There's an injured battalion player on the ice in front of the net. Here's Avery with his shot. No, they score! The first one didn't go in. Yeah. Oh! Number four, Maleko just pushed the referee. Oh, this, this might cost him there. John McCutcheon lines is in between them. That's a no no. Watch the replay here. David Shank gets part of it, but not all of it. I think that's where the, it comes in. Danny Snyder, he just waited till Sean was wide open. And the, and there, no, it's a, the, uh, was it Chad in front of the net? Batted out of the air. Batted out of the air, that's, that's where right. it was. Let's get the official announcement. It was not Avery's goal. But it's a power play goal, and it's now 4-3. goal is 13th of the season, scored by number 19, Chad. So we get an icing call, and right now, all three on sound goals are special units. Yeah. And Two again, power play, one shorthand. Well, how many times do we harp on that? The special teams win or lose so many games. What, what percentage of it? An interesting stat. And I'm surprised Maleko was not reprimanded. Boy, exactly. He, he was well, stretching his luck there. Was he ever? When the line doesn't come in between you and the referee, after you pushed him off or whatever, I'm surprised it wasn't a call on that one. Face off one by Snyder back to the point, but Lukovic couldn't keep it in. So it's 4 3, and the Platers make it a hockey game. Still lots of time to go. 13 24 left. Randy Davidson working against Harrison. Tried to center, got it back again. Lukovic right out front. That went off the handle of the stick of Havel in front. <laughs> wow, game of inches, isn't it? It is that. Snyder battling for the puck, and he's got the handle. Back to Vukovic, and he wasn't ready to take the pass. Brampton sending fresh legs onto the ice. Here's the breakout down the right side. Throwing deep. In quickly is Avery. Avery stops, took a hit, tried to protect the puck. Puck is still in the corner. Still loose in the corner. Avery coming up with it. Tried to throw it back, and it's right in the stick of Maleko. Maleko out of his own zone to center. Left wing pass taken. Trying to throw it into the middle was Reynolds. It didn't get there. Ends up behind the goal. Second Second front. Oh, Sanford just robbed Reynolds. Did he ever rob Reynolds? I'll tell you. Curtis Sanford's made a couple of great saves since he came into the net here. I can, I can think of two breakaway pad saves he's made, you plus this right. one. And again, nobody picks him up out in front. You have the shot. We got... One, two, then we're going to have another man leave the zone in here. Now all of a sudden we got Reynolds. He's, look how wide open he is. Mm, mm, mm. And again, it's Curtis. He's got it. And he's not letting anybody get it. You call the two defensemen left the area in front of the net. Sean Avery went through that area in front of the net. And Mr. Reynolds almost had the fifth Brampton goal. Remains 4-3 battalion. 12-23 to go. Face off to the left of Sanford. Flaxy in his own corner. Kyle Flaxy. Head up out of his own zone. Got it to center. Over the red line. Menard shoots the puck in, then braces himself as he's hit by number 20 McSwain. Joel Ward has a goal already and a shorthanded effort. Ward along the board, celebrating his 18th birthday today. Cross ice from Menard went off escape. Throwing down the middle. They love that lead pass oh, for Spezza, don't they? No question about it. Spetz's had, what, three breakaways. He's had one goal on Roberts. Two breakaways stopped by Sanford. 
Kept in by Maleko. Sanford's going to glove that and drop it down for Domkowitz. Domkowitz put it right on Spezza's stick. Spezza trying to center it. And luckily Sullivan was there for the Platers. Ahead to Menard. Menard out of his own zone. Checked by Maleko. Got it wide for Ward. Ward with Menard. Back to the point. Sullivan with his shot. In a crowd chant. Got a piece of it. Loose puck chant. Closes the pads and hangs on. And again, good constant pressure in here. Using the defenseman like that creates a good scoring opportunity. Well, the on sound platers dug themselves a hole in the first period, falling behind two to nothing after 20 minutes, and have been playing catch up all night long. And just a matter of, uh, I think it's just a matter of time that all of a sudden they're going to catch them. Yeah, that's the way it seems to be going, and I think that's the way the fans are hoping. That's exactly how it looks down here. But again, go back to that Spezza on the chances he got. That just doesn't happen by chance. This kid's a smart hockey player, and these good smart hockey players. They put themselves available to get these open breakaways. They're always in the position. Snyder wins the faceoff, clean back to Bukovic, put it off a leg, and Brampton break out. Torres to center. Leachy got knocked down as he tried to hit Bukovic, or it might have been a two on one. Bukovic couldn't feed it around the boards. Peter Campbell. Pretty good slash there. Campbell out of his own zone. Left wing pass to Davidson inside the line. Snyder going to the net. Oh, the feed was there, but he couldn't get there. Nice job by 22 Hodges. Exactly. Slowing Snyder down enough just to take him out of the lane. Here's Snyder again looking out front. Didn't see anybody, so decides to hang on to it. Still checked there by Hodges. Snyder off a skate of Woods that time. Got it back again. Magnet it on the stick. Spinning around is Peter Campbell. Campbell's got some room in his forehand. Chant the save. Big rebound. Cleared by the Brampton. Battalion down the ice. And again, Chant uh, keeps this 4-3 for Brampton. They just cannot get that quick breakout to work when the battalion are changing. They've tried all night long. 10.35 to go in regulation time. Down the left side, taken away from Van Lusen. Van Lusen, pretty dangerous looking in Russia. All of a sudden, two platers show up. And here comes Avery. Avery's got Woolard with him. Avery into the slot, trying to stay on balance. Chant gets oh. it. Oh! I said it's a matter of time. This is all Sean Avery, and this is what Sean Avery brings to the game in here. 9.39, the time of the tying goal for the Owen Sound Platers. And again, Sean does it, getting it off the boards like that, little chip off the boards. They're part of, part of your, your arsenal. Barker, nice job to stay with Woolard. Exactly, but again, defenseman throws himself in there. Sean stays there, stays with a shot and puts a rebound in. I hate to be critical of David Chan. He's played so well, but he guessed early. He guessed early there. Six. Scored by number 11, Sean Avery. Assisted by number six, Mike Domkowitz. Time of the goal, nine minutes, 39 seconds. 9.39, the time of the tying goal, and it's 4-4 with 10 minutes of hockey at least to go. And I wonder if the Brampton Battalion beginning to feel a little shell shock. Well, yeah, without question. Pardon the bad puns here. Avery with a right wing feed, breaking down the right side, looking for the feed across. One more. Woolard was waiting for it. Trying to set it out front, and Avery was just yeah, there, chomping at the bit. A little saucer pass there, and Avery's wide open for that one. You notice the way Salk has really elevated his game, Yon? Eh? Yeah. Salk was looking for Willard there, and they just weren't reading each other well. Stevenson off the bench, clears the puck to Salk at center. He's onside, looking for the bank pass to Willard. Whoa, Whoa that, was, that close. was close. That was right. That was very close. Get out the magnifying yeah, glass. Nice. But again, Darren Price was right on the line. A little better position than we were. But. A lot better positioning than we had. 9.33 to go in this regulation time. Play. This, see, but this is how close it is. And again, Jan just, you know, just a nice little chip pass. And, oh, ooh, that was, He's, yeah, he, I think he was on site. Nice job in the truck. Sometimes the broadcaster's eyes are working. Well, uh, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Menard shoots the puck in, back forward is Woods. Woods back behind his net, wings it off the wall. Torres trying to chop it out, got it to the line where Menard kept it in with a backhand. 4-4. Four, four. Leachy braces himself for a hit from Menard. Vukovic keeps the puck in. Backhands it through. It was knocked down by Woods. And Woods clears it off the boards. Bateman gloved it. Ahead to Leachy. Bateman is there. 
Ward got it in, but they say it's offside of the line. Another close call. Yeah, it was close. Well, this is what the fans expected. Well, again, to, to come back and and, uh, and win this game, fans love it. You know, they forget that all of a sudden the, uh, you're down two nothing, you're down four two. It's a comeback win. And it's a, it's a two two points that really the players got to have if they want to stay with Erie. Yeah, Erie and Guelph in the Midwest and division. I give Stan Butler full credit, though. I think this is one of the hardest working young teams in the OHL. For a first year expansion team like that, with no question. And this game isn't over yet. Not at all. Spezza should be good for at least one more breakaway. Parthenay shoots the puck in, and that's going to be an intentional offside. Yep. And they're going to bring it all the way back into Brampton Battalion territory. Mr. Parthenay doesn't like the call, but however, he's not going to win that argument with John McCutcheon. Back into his own compound area with 8.47 to go. It was 4-2 to start the third, and the players have two unanswered goals, and this is where experience really pays. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and it'll show in. So the face-off to the left of Chant, who has been outstanding. Oh, with no question. David Chant with a 4.54 goals against average. Numerous big stops. Shots on goal 41-18 to in exactly. favor of the Platers. And, and the only reason why this game is tied right now is, is Chant. because of Mr. Chant. I mean, the trouble is that uh, if he doesn't uh, hang on and get a point or, or win this game, unfortunately, the media people will not give him a, a star on it. No, nobody's going to remember. That's right. Peter Campbell in the corner, centers it out front. Davidson was slowed down, couldn't get to it. Flax is going to have to hurry. Curtis Sanford thought of coming out, but Domkowitz is back in time. Then Domkowitz, no. a bad pass right to Barker. This, this is a, one of the players' problems that they've got to continue to work on, and I know they are and improve on before they get into the playoffs next spring. Peter Campbell at center ice. Eight minutes to go. It's tied for all. Just off the bench, fresh legs is Havel. Havel has two assists in this game. Davidson to the right wing. Peter Campbell spun around looking for Avery. It's not real pretty out there right not now. Not really. Looked out here, Spezza always dangerous behind the back pass. There's a shot off his stick. As McSwain tried to tee it up. Well, it's a good thing that Dahmer just stayed with him and got a stick in front of that because we had, a, again, a bad line change. There's the fans in the north end of the Harry Lumley Bayshore Community Center. Yeah, a fan with a puck there. That Youngster goes home happy no matter who wins. No matter who wins, he's got a puck on him. 7.46 left in regulation. Avery against Spetson. Spetson wins the draw back to the point. Shot by Hanchuk, didn't get through. Wooler with a right wing pass. You know, I'm thinking Wooler is due for one here tonight. And of course he does have one, doesn't he? I, I guess he does. Yeah, he batted that one out of the yep. air, didn't he? What have we got called by the referee here now? A high stick. I think Sean's got himself two minutes for high stick. So if you're Brampton, at least you get a chance to turn the momentum a little here. Yeah, yeah. if they're going to be successful, they probably have to bury one now. Of course, they've also got to be careful because the Platers have enough uh, in their penalty killers that they, as they showed in the second period. There's the Pickering native who has requested a trade. Is not happy here, even though he's playing some of the best hockey of the season. Yeah, I just, I always have a, a problem when somebody says I, I'm not getting enough ice time when he's playing on the uh, second line, he's playing on the power play, and he's playing on the man short. I don't know what extra ice time he wants. However, Sean, the... Uh, I hope when it's all said and done that uh, no deals made. Sometimes the best deals you, you make are the ones that aren't trades. Exactly. Spetzal looking to go coast to coast. That's broken up. And it's thrown out by Stevenson. There's a giveaway. And it's Jan Salk. Salk centers the puck. Actually back to the point to Stevenson. His drive. Gloved by Chant. And uh, Chant hung on a little too long for the referee. He blows the whistle. That left... Uh, Leaves 131 in the Avery penalty. Seven minutes and one second left in regulation time. Both teams making changes here. And again, what happens on you? You get both these wingers set up this side of the blue line. You know, Mr. Spees is coming over that. He knows darn well he can't pass the puck up until he's over the blue line. In the meantime, it's an air pass. They do the crossover. It looks pretty, but it's not successful. And the trouble is, another thing, again, we can follow continuing. We get the puck down there. Both our defensemen win. 
and our defenseman gets a shot that might put the put us ahead 5-4. We still got these two forwards coming back in the neutral zone. I got a little chuckle. Linesman Price drops the puck. Linesman McCutcheon is fixing the ice with a water bottle down here. <laughs> so, so there's more than uh, just the players not communicating from time to time. That's right, yeah. There's a higher wrist shot down the ice. 65 seconds left in the Brampton power play. And look at the hustle of Joel Ward. Tried to send it out front. Now he's going to have to catch the winger that he gave the puck to. Parthenay with Torres. Torres tried to slide it through and get it himself. It rolls to Sanford. He'll hang on. Joel Ward has been working so oh. hard, game in, game out. Well, he's just been named the, uh, the player, player of the game, the hardest working player of the game. And there he is there, Joel Ward, I tell you. It's a treat coming to the games and watching this kid play right now. It really is, and uh, the scouts are starting to notice. Early in the year, scouts were saying to me, what, oh, does this kid play the body? Yeah. And at that stage, he wasn't playing physical no, hockey. No, not at all. And that's what the scouts were asking about. I know Buffalo uh, think that Ward might have a chance to play in the show one day. Well, again, he's not hes not a small boy by any means. He's got himself in great shape, and then it's showing. Back to the point to Woods. Woods tees it up. Actually hit his teammate McSwain at the side of the goal. Spets it in the corner. 45 seconds left in the Brampton power play. Centered out front, nobody home. Peter Campbell picks it and takes away to center. Campbell with Snyder. They stay on side as they cross. Campbell had it just get away from him. Well, Peter was looking to go end-to-end -end on that one, but just lost control of it. Here comes Spezza back into Owen Sound territory. Look out! Snyder and Spezza. I don't know who got the worst of that, but in the meantime, Brantham with a pretty good scoring chance in front. Boy, Spezza still trying to pick up a stick. Now has his lumber back. Well, Snyder got hurt on that, too. Yeah, I think so. Let's hope that's not serious. Five seconds left in the penalty to Avery. Trainer, Rick. Mancini's coming down to check him out. I hope it's not the knee that, 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 that hurt, he hurt him last, last year. year. That's right. So Avery's back on the ice, and the Claters are back to full strength, killing off that minor penalty. Brampton out of their own zone. Just over five minutes to go. I don't know if we can get a shot next break of Avery at the bench, but he's in a lot of pain right now as they're offside at the Brampton blue line. Five minutes and ten seconds left. Actually, there's no way we can shoot Dan Snyder because he's bent right over and lower yeah. than the boards. But that's two big hit that Danny's throwing tonight. Right in front of Rick Mancini. There you see the helmet come up. That's Dan Snyder. Trainer Rick Mancini without the hair is talking to Snyder. Oh, Danny's shaking his head in there. He's... It looked like he was favoring his knee, but it might have just been the win. You know? uh, no, it was his knee. He... Yeah, he's, he's flexing that right leg. Yeah. Here's a free shot for Willard. Oh, somehow Chank got a piece of that drive. Boy, I tell you, that was labeled. Wasn't it, though? There's a shot by Flaxy. Stick saved by Chant. 4.52 left in regulation time. Tied at four. Snyder. Pardon me, Avery in the corner. Put it behind the net. A little bit of interference there. Flaxy does a good job to battle to keep it in. Lost the battle eventually. Dompwitz. But he stayed with his man, That's Torres. Exactly right. Avery took a high stick. Referee shakes his head. There's a shot. Sanford turns it aside. Avery trying to buy a penalty there for his teammates. Salk was all tied up. Very scrambly <laughs> hockey here right now, boy. It's like little kids, and they're all is chasing the puck, isn't it? No question. Brampton out of their own zone. Off the glass. And trapped offside is Sullivan. Sullivan was trapped in, and now they'll bring it out. And that's the longest blade offside I've seen this year. No question. Joel Ward for Menard. Menard stood up by Maleko right at the blue line, and that's an offside. And that's an offside, exactly. Yeah, he just held him up long enough. Sullivan got over the line before the puck did. But again, right now, uh, we're right in the scramble. Street hockey playing here. But they need to get their, their top line out here again. Danny side looked like he's ready to go. But however, it's pretty hard to pull this... Uh, this line off right now, Sullivan, Menard, and Joel Ward. The way they played, they've had a great game. I don't know if the reward other than a shorthanded goal that uh, Ward got with a goal on an even situation, but boy, they worked hard to deserve one. Three minutes and 50 seconds left in regulation, tied at four. We may be headed to overtime. I wouldn't be surprised. Menard steers the puck in. Back forward is Woods. Woods bumps with Ward. 
Thrown off the glass. Reynolds couldn't bang it out. It'll be carried out by Malenko. Malenko over center. Shoots the puck in. Sanford's going to get a piece of it. Sanford clears it around the glass. Nice job by Curtis. Out of his own zone is Sullivan. He got knocked down, but Bernard picked it up. Put it deep. Didn't get it deep enough. Both teams changing here as this scrambly stretch of hockey continues. Back into his own corner is Parthene. Off the glass. Flaxy kept it in, but it's a glove pass. Yep. Whistled down by the referee. Three minutes and three seconds to go. Well, if you joined us late, you've missed a pretty good hockey game. Oh, it's been an entertaining game, without question. Peter Campbell had a chance to score in the opening 15 seconds, only to be thwarted by David Chant. Brampton came back, scored a couple of first period goals, led 2 nothing after 20 minutes. Each team picked up a couple of goals in the second period. It was 4-2 Brampton after 40 minutes, and then two unanswered goals at this point in the third by Owen Sound and tied the game 4-4. Right now, less than three minutes to play. Chant. Shoots the puck around the boards. Domkwitz moves in to put the puck into the corner. They'll throw it around the boards on the near side. Flaxy comes across to stop it. Parthenay gave the puck to Davidson. Davidson being checked there by Thompson. Davidson trying to get free. Parthenay slowed him down. Defenseman moving up. This is Domkowitz. Domkowitz thought about going in deep, then brought it back, threw it toward the goal. Parthenay had it there in his palm for just a moment. 2.20 to go. Right out by Spezza. Spezza with Thompson on the near side. The pass in the middle for McSwain. Ends up in the corner. Two minutes, ten seconds left. Peter Campbell saw Torres coming at him. Cut away inside the line. That's off a stick over the glass. And out of play in the south end. Two minutes, five seconds left. Oh, you've got to talk about the great job Curtis Sanford's done in that in relief of Corey Roberts. No question about it. We must mention once again the excellent goaltending of David Chant, who's had 44 shots sent his way. Stopped all but four of them. And, yeah, and, and he's been pressured continually. Yes. It's Curtis Sanford readying himself for the face-off down the ice in Brampton territory. Avery. Telling lines of where he wants the puck drop. <laughs> From the draw, Avery on his backhand. Throws it toward the net. Champ stops it and is going to freeze it once again. We'll get a face off a little deeper this time. And again, he's not going to give any, any second chances for rebound, whatever else. He'll take a face off with two minutes to go in the game, less than two minutes. Or oh, regulation time, I should say. Regulation time, that's right. You're, down, you're probably down in this uh, sudden death situation right now and it gets this late in the third period. Yeah, that's a very safe statement, I think. From the draw, Vukovic moves across, throws the puck down deep. Brampton throw it off the glass, and it went off the glove of Vukovic, so there will be no icing. Sanford leaves it for Stevenson. Big Dave Stevenson comes to the near boards to Wooler. He left it there for Avery. Avery had to go off a leg, but Wooler brought it in, shoots it into the far corner. Salt tried to tee it up right away. Willard wants to shoot. Avery is there. Avery falls, shot just wide. Willard centered it. This is Vukovic. Throws it deep with 1.22 to go. Willard behind the net has Avery out front. Got it out, but Brampton didn't clear it very well. Back to the point. Vukovic with a shot off. Oh, skate and chance. Stop that. I'll tell you, again, you know, luck or, or whatever, but again, he was standing there. He's on his blades. Deflected off uh, the, Bram the Brampton player number eight there. Nearly into his own net. That's when positioning as a goaltender is so very oh, important. Exactly. And if you're uh, down on your knees, who you knows? You might not make that save. Well, if he's down on his knees, it's probably in the top shelf on him. Took that off the belly pad, and there's, I would guess, about 18, 1900 here for a Wednesday game. Yeah, again, weather's so nice and everything else. When the hot game's done, I always say maintain the rink should be full, but however. Well, we know nobody stays home to watch the Leafs anymore. None that I know of. <laughs> well, I got a dirty look from a cameraman here. Oh, yeah. Must be a Leaf fan. Lee. There are Leaf fans around, I guess. Snyder won the draw back to Campbell. His shot went off a couple of sticks, ends up on the far side. Chopped by Reynolds, but not out. There's a wrist shot in a crowd. Vukovic toward the goal. Chance stops that, and he'll hang on. Wow, talk about a battle for space oh, boy, in front of that you. net. 
and, and the planters just continue to put, put the pressure on them. You know, just one minute to go in the third period. And again, you're in the overtime situation. That's right, 59.5 seconds on the big clock at center. 4-4, four, four. and what a third period it's been for the Platers. So don't go away. If we're tied at the end of regulation, we'll go to sudden death, sudden victory overtime. Five minutes. Snyder obviously all right, not feeling the adverse effects of that sore knee. The backhand shot steered away by Champ with the goal stick. Davidson has the puck. Domkowitz with a shot that missed the target. Flaxy will just throw it deep. Snyder behind the net. Took a hit there from Barker. Davidson trying to get it free. Can't. Nice job by Barker to bank it off the boards and out. Domkowitz throws it right back down the wing. It's Peter Clark at center. Clark got it in, but not deep enough. Maleko throws it down the middle. Flaxy off the boards at the Brampton bench and in. 25 seconds left. And Snyder is not himself. No. He's, uh, he, he's, he's feeling the effects of it, no question. Offside at the Brampton blue line. 19.5 seconds to go. Just a reminder, if you want to see some great Ontario Hockey League action, see the players in person, contact the Owen Sound Players office during business hours at 371. 7452. That's 371 7452. Saturday night, 7 30, here at the Bayshore. Owen South Players host the Oshawa Generals. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, no matter what's going on in town, this is the cheapest entertainment in town and the best entertainment. From the face off, it's Dom Kowitz dancing to the blue line and in. Dom Kowitz with 14 seconds left, throws it toward the net. Champ will scoop that up and hang on. Shots on goal now 49 to 20. 49 to 20. Should this game be going into overtime? Well, I think it's gonna. Well, one more face-off deep in Brampton territory. Dave Siciliano. Well, Dave, he wants to make sure his people's position. He knows he's got a chance for one good, clean shot if Sean Avery can win the draw here. And Dan Snyder's taking his helmet off now at the bench, which would lead me to believe he may not return. I'm just going to say, it. You know, they should have Dahmer that shot of his in the middle area, and that's exactly where Cisneano got him over. Avery wins a draw back to Vukovic. Vukovic with a drive. Scores! With eight seconds left, Nick Vukovic. And I tell you, you got to feel sorry for David Chant in there, no matter what happens. Happy that the players are going to get two points out of this, but boy, that's the 50th shot on net. Watch this replay here. He had no chance. Good draw by Sean Avery. That's how important the face-off is. And watch this. And again, just it deflected up in the top shelf. Didn't have a chance on it. Second of the season, scored by number 26, Nick Vukovic. Assisted by number 11, Sean Avery. That'll do her. And by number 19, Chad Ward. Time of the goal, 19 minutes, 51 seconds. Well, what a Nick. great comeback by the Owen Sound Platers with three unanswered goals in the third period. We're going to go downstairs. Manny Pava was going to recap the scoring in the third period. And we're going to come back and we'll have the three-star selection. But you see how very pleased the Owen Sound players are as they mob goaltender Curtis Sanford, and you can't help but feel just a little bit oh, sorry. For, for David Chan, I tell you, the, uh, he played well. It took 50 shots, as I say, the 50th shot to beat him. And then, uh, again, Curtis Sanford did his job coming in, pulling Corey Roberts, and then we get two points. Out of it. it was a hard work, two points, I'll tell you that. Boy, that's really tough for the Brampton Battalion. They don't even get a point, and they lose this hockey game 5-4. to four. Let's go downstairs, and uh, Manny Pava has the third period scoring, and we're back with the three stars. Another close one between the Owen Sound Platers and the Brampton Battalion. Again, the Platers scoring in the last 10 seconds to beat the Battalion, similar to the first game they played earlier this season here in Owen Sound. Taking a look at the scoring summary in the third period quickly, all three goals by the Owen Sound Platers. Chad Willard made it 4-3 with a power play goal, his 13th of the season at 6.08. The assist going to Sean Avery and Dan Snyder. 
Then Owen Sound tied it up. Sean Avery, 16th of the season at 9.39. The lone assist going to Mike Dunkowitz. And then the game winner, Nick Vukovic at 19.53, actually with 8.1 seconds left on the clock. Vukovic gets his second of the season. The assist going to Sean Avery and Chad Woolard. And Owen Sound wins it 5-4 to four tonight. Owen Sound out shooting Brampton 51 to 20. The Platers going two for four with the man advantage. Brampton 0 for two. Kind of a, a quiet uh, hero tonight for the Owen Sound Platers was Curtis Sanford, who made a couple of big saves on breakaways by the battalion when he came on in relief of Corey Roberts. So a big game again for Curtis Sanford. He continues to play his A game. A couple of good games tonight too by Sean Avery and Joel Ward. Well, that wraps it up here for the scoring summary with some final thoughts. Let's head back up to the G-men, Glenn Juniper and Gary Hahn. Guys? Thanks very much, Manny. And if you're an Owen Sound Platers fan, you could not want a better oh. finish. Uh, I'll tell you, write a book on, you write a book on these things. But the, uh, uh, it's just one of these things. It, it, it's games like these that are character builders for the Platers because they were down. Mind you, the, the coaching staff though, like this. This is the second time they had to do this, That's the right. Brampton team in there. But however, they've done it, and now they can. They got to win to go off on a high tomorrow night. Exactly, it's a, it's a big win. Let's have a look at the three stars in the hockey game as chosen by the media. First of all, the number three star with four points in the hockey game, number eleven, Sean Avery, the number two star, and I'm glad they picked oh, him as a star. Oh, without question, David Chant faced uh, 45 shots. He stopped 40 of them, played outstanding hockey in the first two periods. Didn't get a lot of work in the third, got some help, froze the puck whenever he could, couldn't do it all. Uh, you can't do it all, exactly. You've got to have some help out in front. And the number one star, we talked about him on his 18th birthday. He had a shorthanded goal. That was the only stat, but how about the work ethic? That's the key to it. And, you know, when you got somebody continuing to work like that, that rests the bench. You, you see that guy out there, how can you not go out and play the same way? Exactly. So a 5-4 win by the Owen Sound players over the Brampton Battalion. And now Owen Sound will travel to Guelph tomorrow night then be home to host the Oshawa Generals 7.30 Saturday right here at the Harry Lumley Bay Shore Community Center. We're looking forward to that one. Oh, that should be a good one. Don't forget uh, to get your tickets at the Platers box office for Saturday's game, Oshawa and Owen Sound, a 7.30 start. So on behalf of Glenn Juniper, I'm Gary Hahn. We have many talented people putting this broadcast together behind the cameras and in the truck. Thanks for watching Owen Sound Platers Hockey here on Rogers Community Television. Good night.